The following broadcast is a presentation of CUTV Sports. A winning tradition and two highly successful coaches are attributes to describe both teams as the Bloomsburg Huskies play host to the California Vulcans in this NCAA Division II Round 3 playoff matchup. My name is Josh Eaches. With me, Andy Walter. And Andy, we're on the big stage now. It doesn't get much bigger than this. It is indeed. You talk about it. It's kind of the elite eight matchup of these NCAA Division II playoffs. Next week, you have the national semifinals. We talk about last week what happened. California made easy work of Seton Hill. Final score in that game, 48-7. Kevin McCabe led the way. 253 passing yards, three touchdowns. Two of those to Marcel Bassano, who had a great day receiving seven receptions for 140 yards. Yeah, Westchester, on the other hand, wins 28, or excuse me, Bloomsburg wins 28 to 21 over Westchester in a game that was close as everyone would expect. A lot of people thought Westchester might be the team playing Cal for the third time this season this week, but Jesse Cooper obviously had other things to say about that. One thing I noticed and it continued last week, Andy, is Bloomsburg's a team that really knows how to pound it on the ground, averaging 262 rushing yards a game this season. And that's amazing. You talk about their total yards, only averaging right around 300 total yards. So that really, I think, tells you just how much this team relies on the rushing game to get them to victory. How about how these teams got here? Westchester going through a road of Southern Connecticut State and then playing uh, in the second round against uh, Bloomsburg and losing, so Bloomsburg is in this game from getting their bye. California goes through Seton Hill in round one after they defeated American International in the previous round. So you have the matchup here, and what this really all comes down to is that controversy when it came to the rankings, Andy. Bloomsburg jumps California for that number one spot in the last poll of the season. Yeah, it's something we talked about you know, in depth last week during the Seton Hill game. California was at the number one position going into the last weekend of play. Played Seton Hill in the PSAC Championship game, won that. Bloomsburg wins their game against the Gannon team, who, let's be honest, just isn't quite as impressive as you'd expect Westchester to be. Somehow they jump back over top of California. The only thing you can really think of, maybe head to head, is the reason Bloomsburg got the edge. But controversial, yes, California had an easier path, but at the same time, I think they'd much rather be hosting this game right now. Well, as it State. shakes out, as it shakes out, this game will be played at Redmond Stadium today. And if you remember, it's not the second, first time we've been at Redmond Stadium this, this season. It's actually the second. And, First time it was a lot wetter than it is today, Andy. And the remnants of Tropical Storm Hannah, and in that game, Bloomsburg was able to defeat California by a score of 24 to 17. An inter interception return late in the game would end up being the winner. And it was a game which Bloomsburg said they were going to run on California, and they did run on California. They did. You talk about what happened in that game. You talked about those season stats, how they like to run the ball. Bloomsburg had 325 rushing yards in that matchup, only 333 yards total offense. That tells you, only eight yards passing, they're going to really try to pound the ball once again on California today, I think. This is the 20th meeting between these two teams, and the home team has won the last four matchups between California and Bloomsburg. So I guess Bloomsburg would be the favorite today, not only as the home team, but the number one seed in the region. Now, into the, some logistics of the game today, some players to watch for Bloomsburg. You have to start with Derek Price, one of the running backs. He was uh, the receptor of a lot of those stretch gives that Bloomsburg ran against California in matchup one this season. He was. You talk about Derek Price on the air. He has 1,167 rushing yards, also six touchdowns, averaging over five yards a carry. You talk about what he's done as a freshman. He broke Jamar Brittingham's single season rookie mark. They also got him PSAC West, or East, excuse me, Freshman of the Year accolades. Over 1,000 yards in his freshman campaign, very impressive for Derek Price. How about the 250-pound senior defensive lineman, John Ox from Wingat, Pennsylvania? He is an ox up the middle. He is. You talk about it. He's only six on the team in tackles, only has right around 40 tackles. However, eight sacks on the year, by far leading this Bloomsburg defense. I think California's got to focus on him if they want the passing game to be effective. Now, California offensively, you talked about that passing game, and I think it's Marcel Pistano to watch out for. He's sort of been the go-to guy all season. Last week, you mentioned A.J. Jackson. He's been poised to break out all season, sort of has to this point now. Could have a big game at any time, but... Pistano seems to be that guy who you want to get the, the ball to late in games. He does seem to be. You talk about Marcel Pistano on the year. 
has 68 receptions, over 1,000 yards receiving already, moving up the record books very quickly. Had his chance to become the number one leader in single season receiving yards, depending on how well he does in this game. I think Marcel Pitano is going to be the favorite target for Kevin McCabe. And as they work in, A.J. Jackson, look for Marcel Pistano to get a lot of open opportunities in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And one man we haven't talked about that this yet this year really stepped up last week, the freshman linebacker from Sheltonham, Maryland, Terrence Hemsley, performed very nicely for California last week. Yeah, Darren Burns, you know, wasn't able to play last week for California. Terrence Hemsley ended up taking his spot, played a nice game, called his name a lot last week, was on in multiple plays. Single H, as we like to call him, really had a great game for the Vulcans. He really did, and a lot of players are going to have to step up and have great games today. For either of these teams to be successful, should be a barn burner here on CUTV. We're going to take a look at some highlights from the last matchup between these two teams, and then a commercial break and kickoff will be next between the Huskies and the Vulcans right here on CUTV. Stephen Adams, the deep back this time. He'll get the give and go into the end zone for the touchdown. Bloomsburg Huskies strike on their first drive. Looks like someone's going to be back there to protect Latour, and that's exactly the case. And it's a keeper. He's a lead blocker. Latour breaks a tackle and picks up the first down and more. Heading for the end zone, Dan Latour. Touchdown, Bloomsburg. Dane Williams gets the give up the middle. No, it's a play fake. Deep pass downfield for Pistano. Caught, and he's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Vulcans, Marcel Pistano strikes for California, and there's the big play the Vulcans were looking for. Play fake. McCabe looking left. The Jack direction of A.J. Jackson. What a catch. A.J. Jackson reels one in. 25 yards for California, and another first down. And off to the home run hitter, Wendell Brown. He takes a swing for the fences, and he's going to be gone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Wendell Brown strikes and ties the game up. McCabe gets away from an early rush, rolls out, throws across his body. It's intercepted. This one is going to go all the way down to the end zone for a touchdown, Bloomsburg. How intimidating is a Vulcan? I think we can do a little bit better than some mythical god of fire. Yeah, we need something more forceful, more intimidating, more in your face than that wimp blaze. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment effort and good sportsmanship that's what the division two game environment initiative is about be a part of the excitement and find out why these student athletes say with pride i chose i chose i chose division two there's a university where success is more than a paper chase for a degree one that builds the kind of character that can help you do the right thing as well as the smart thing, where core values of integrity, civility, and responsibility are not just taught, but integrated into your day-to-day -day experience. California University of Pennsylvania. Brandon Jackson in the backfield. Far gonna drop back, hand it off to Jackson, dive play up the middle. He's pushing defenders past the first down marker. Go right behind the center. Do you guys ever stop? The defensive line. Let's see if the Packers can push this one into the end zone.
the national anthem played by the Bloomsburg University marching band here at Redmond Stadium. CUTV is back for its coverage of Vulcan playoff football. Andy, how do the Vulcans and the Huskies match up in our tale of the tape? It's going to be interesting. You talk about these two teams. They're very similar when it comes to total numbers. California has the edge NCAA when it comes to total fans. offense. We talk about Bloomsburg. It's all going to come with the rushing game. That's what we're going to expect. I think that's what California's got to look for. Bloomsburg can rush the ball effectively. They're going to have a great chance of victory here today. We like to look at these teams statistically and how they compare to one another. First, when Bloomsburg has the ball, definitely the thing to watch out for is that running game between Derek Rice and Kenny Domzowski. They've got a couple of guys who can run all over California. They do, and you can see it right there. Number one team in the PSAC when it comes to rushing the football. I mean, California... As this year's gone on, it's gotten better and better when it comes to rushing defense. We'll see if they can shut down Bloomsburg in this rematch. On the other hand, for California, they are the number one scoring team in the PSAC. For defense scoring-wise, Bloomsburg not bad at six, but California knows how to put points on the board. Now we move into our keys of the game. First for California, number one above all else, they have to stuff the run. They do. We've talked about it time and time again already. As you know, during this matchup, Josh, I've got to find some way to slow down Derek Price and this Bloomsburg Husky rushing offense. I've got to find some way to put the ball in Dan Latour's hands and make him pass to try to beat them today. Much has been made of the record-breaking passing season California has had. Not a lot of success in the first matchup the season that would be crucial today and Andy the third key for California stay focused in this game you know they've, they've won a couple of big ones recently Seton Hill and you go back to the last couple of games of the year Gannon Mercyhurst a little easy for California all that Mercyhurst game was close they got to stay into this game for, for a full uh, full game they do I mean other than the PSAC championship game against Westchester this is the first real matchup California has really I think had a lot of you know non-confidence if you will about since you, know, you go all the way back, I mean, how far back do you have to go, Josh? You know, IUP maybe? Because you think about month of October, not a whole lot there. So I think California's got to find a way to stay focused. On the other side for Bloomsburg, the three keys, varied play calling, having a mistake-free quarterback, and hail to the little play on words for you there. Andy, back to the varied play calling. I don't think that those stretch handoffs are going to work all day and all night on California like they did in game one. They're going to have to run it in a couple of different directions. They are. And there's one thing California, you know they're going to come in ready to defend against. It's going to be that stretch play because that's what burned them. 325 rushing yards. You can say a good 200, 250 of those yards were just from that singles. You know, stretch play to the outside. California's going to shut that down. Bloomsburg has to find a way to do something else offensively. Dan Latour this season has been fantastic. He rushed for a school record 463 yards as a quarterback and had a career-high seven rushing touchdowns. And he's third place all time at Bloomsburg in career passing yards. But the number one thing for him today is to not give the ball to California. It is going to be important for Dan Latour just to make sure that he can just hold on to the ball and do what he can. You talked about it. He only has three interceptions this year, which is good. 18 touchdown passes, so he is a good passer. They do look for the pass when they get in the red zone, but at the same time, you know, he's going to have to be able to hold on to this ball because California knows how to capitalize on their opponent's mistakes. And as far as hail to the Danny Hill coach, for the Bloomsburg Huskies is a phenomenal career record, much like John Luckhart for California, both the winningest coaches in program history. But Danny Hale's been to the playoffs in 1996, 2000, 2001, and 05. In 2000, he reached the title game. And that's going to be a big part of this because you talked about this Bloomsburg team. Danny Hale's the kind of guy, he knows what it's like to be in these big game situations. He's going to be able to properly prepare the troops for battle here. It's going to be important to see Danny Hale and what he can do in this matchup. Yeah, the only time the Vulcans have ever won in Bloomsburg as long as Hale has played them was in the 1984 season by a score of 24-14. to 14. He is 3-0 at home against California. He certainly knows how to coach against this team. An odd fact, Andy, you and I saw earlier go back to that 2000 season under Denny Hale. Yes, it was a great year for Bloomsburg reaching the title game, but uh, they got themselves out of the record books, uh, the, a record that dated back to that 2000 season just last week. They did, and I think it's one of those records, yeah, we're not in the record books. Good for us if you're Bloomsburg, because you talk about before last weekend's matchup between West Texas A&M and Abilene Christian, Bloomsburg had given up the most points in NCAA Division II playoff history, giving up 63 points to Delta State in that 2000 title game last weekend. Abilene Christian scored 93 points in that matchup. Not, you know, West Texas A&M, they scored 68. And <laughs> it's just funny to talk about 68 points, you're not even within 30 points of winning the game. Uh, what's funny is the, the losing team and the winning team both broke that record Bloomsburg had set because of that high scoring affair. Uh, we mentioned records, should mention some for California. Kevin McCabe set two last week, becoming the school's single season record holder in passing yardage, as well as touchdowns. That 
passing yardage mark goes back to 1990. It was originally set by Sam Mannery. I think that just goes to show how much of a stud Kevin McCabe has been since transferring over from Division I Virginia. He has been. He's really given California that extra angle of attack. And I think that also shows just the kind of receivers that Kevin McCabe has had this year in Marcel Pisano and A.J. Jackson. Now, California, they had some talent last year with Nate Force. He was a big receiver for Joe Ruggiero's offense. But now California has these multiple offensive weapons, and I think it's really allowed this pass game to open up and become very successful. Yeah, their offense certainly uh, has the ability to put a lot of points up. And Marcel Pistano also setting records this season for California. In fact, I believe Pistano is only eight receptions, six receptions shy of the single-season recep receptions record, and he needs just under 100 yards a day to set the single-season receiving yards record. So... Pistano and McCabe, that one-two puncher, going to be a one-two punch for the ages here at California. You throw A.J. Jackson into the mix and your safety valve up the middle, Corey Garver. And this is a Vulcan passing attack that has gotten it going since the first meeting between Bloomsburg. And if they get it going today, I think Bloom could be on their heels, but it's important for California to start early. That has been trouble for them in the last couple of games. It is. We've seen time and time again California just can't quite get the ball rolling in that first quarter. California comes out strong out of the locker rooms in the second half, but there's been some games where it's been too close. They've let the opponent stick in. It's really caused you know, a close finish all the way to the end. California's got to get started early and not wait till the second half to really show up to play. And a fast fact for you coming into this game, it's about California and their scoring. Boy, they've had a high-powered attack this year, and they're scoring early and often. 72 scoring drives this season, 64 touchdowns and eight field goals. The average drive only takes six plays and covers 56 yards. So California's had 11 scoring drives take under a minute, 17 under two minutes, and 14 under three minutes. That is an amazingly efficient offense for California. One of the reasons they're not amongst the leaders in time of possession, whereas on the other side, Bloomsburg is because they feature a running tack, and their drives are long and sustained and usually end up in scores, though. Bloom isn't as high scoring of a team as California. The weather for today's game, just about as good as you could expect for a playoff game in late November. It's just past Turkey Day here. All those players' stomachs are full, but they're looking to fill that craving they have for an NCAA championship. Cold and in the mid-40s, maybe a chance of a flurry here later this afternoon. But uh, all in all, should be great weather. Nothing compared to what we saw back in September. Absolutely not. You talked about that game in September, the remnants of what was once Hurricane Hannah came through the region, started at about 11 o'clock for the 12 o'clock tip-off, or tip-off, excuse me, kickoff. And these two teams, you know, had to fight that rain the entire game. Just kept pouring down, pouring down. And I think that's the reason California couldn't quite get the offensive attack going like they wanted to through the passing game. Looks like back to return for California is going to be Terrence Johnson. He returned one for a touchdown against Seton Hill last week, as well as Freddie Bacco, who also has a return to his credit this season. We're underway here in round three of the NCAA Division II playoffs. It's fielded by Freddie Bacco at the 14-yard line. Bacco goes for the wedge up the middle, and he'll be brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Number 38 for the Huskies, Ryan Maggs. This is going to kind of tell the tale, see how California comes out, see if maybe they try to put their own sustained rushing attack in as we see Dan Williams come back this week. Maybe they go to the air quickly, see if they can't get up on Bloomsburg early and force Bloomsburg to become a one-dimensional team through the air. Bloom this week, Andy, fifth time in school history. They've faced the team twice in one season, and uh, the fourth was when they played Westchester last week, playing them two out of three games. McCabe's going to pass on the first play of the game. He'll complete it to Corey Garver at the 34-yard line. Gain of some four yards on that play, and, and I called Corey Garver the safety valve, and usually that's what the tight end's considered to be in an offense, but that doesn't mean Garver can't get himself downfield. He loves to run those seam routes and split the safeties. He does. We've seen him a lot in the beginning of the season really work, and I think defense have had to focus on Corey Garver, make sure they keep him covered. And I like that play call because what it does, it's going to make someone cover Corey Garver. It's going to allow those big-time receivers, A.J. Jackson, Marcel Pistano, even Josh Gumbert when he's out there, get one-on-one -on -one coverage make a good play downfield. Second down, five to go. Ball spotted just shy of the 35-yard line. Dane Williams is going to go off tackle to the left, shed one tackler, and then be brought down by John Ox. Short of the 40-yard line, it will be a third and short for the Vulcans. Nice job by the California offense line. Did a nice job just holding on to those blocks. You didn't see any Bloomberg defenders get any type of penetration into the backfield. Allowed Dane Williams to pick his hole and cutting up the middle, put the shoulder down, got very close to the first down. John Ox, that big defensive lineman we alluded to earlier on and 
He was pretty quiet in game one between these two teams, but he'll get himself on the tackle sheet early on in this game with that play. I formation for California, 13-40 to play in the first. It's third and one. Pistano in motion. Hand off to Williams. He has the first down. Rams a linebacker at the 45-yard line before being brought down. Gain of some five on the play. It's good for a Vulcan first down. California, nice job there. Just running up between the tackles. You see Dan Williams, nice hole there on the right side of the California offensive line. Williams just puts the head down. Once he gets the first down, knocks Oscar Rivera, the cornerback, back a couple yards. So he keeps driving forward to get that first down for California. Bloomsburg scored on their first possession of the game in game one. California looking to mimic that here today. Rushes on, dumped out in the flat to Williams. Throws a stiff arm, but can't get away from the leg tackle made by Oscar Rivera. Williams gains two on that play. It'll be second and eight. Nice pursuit there by Bloomsburg. Did a nice job sniffing out that screen play before it was able to take place. California, nice job. They got downfield and blocked, but Bloomsburg just too quick to react to that play. Didn't quite have enough blockers over there, and then Williams got taken down after a gain of about two. Dane Williams is the lone back. Two receivers to the right of McCabe. We're gonna make it three after Pistano comes in motion. Play fake, he'll look right. McCabe for A.J. Jackson, complete at the 39. Jackson trying to avoid the tackles, but he can't. Two men will bring him down. Oscar Rivera and Justin Rivera. Well, Josh, take a look because he saw California move that third wide receiver to the right side. Kind of got a feeling of non-safety, if you will. I was not feeling yeah. safe. Once you have, I mean, you say Pistano and Jackson on the same side of the field, then you include Josh Gumbert in that. I mean, you almost, you know, expect to see at least one player get open. That time it was A.J. Jackson. Nice job sitting down in that zone, making the completion, getting what he could after the catch. 12-20 to play in the first quarter. California moving downfield. Hand off to Williams. Dive play. Tries a spin move at the line of scrimmage, but John Ox brings him down from behind. Tackle number two for the big defensive lineman. Second down and eight again. Oxy. Six foot, 250 pound senior from Wind Gap. A little small to be an interior lineman, but uh, he certainly plays bigger than he is. And you see Bloomsbury kind of moving him around. They have him at defensive end so far in this matchup. Kind of creating a little bit of a matchup there for California on the offensive line with Nate Nurse. I think it's a matchup they like, see if they can keep track of it. Wendell Brown scoots to the outside with the run out of the shotgun, throws a stiff arm and is hauled out of bounds at the 16-yard line by Greg Myers. But there's Wendell Brown's phenomenal acceleration and use of the stiff arm, and he is a change of pace back if I've ever seen one. He is, and you saw during the highlights in the first matchup, Wendell Brown have that huge touchdown run, and Seems like speed is something that's gonna hurt this Bloomsbury defense. See Wendell Brown is getting to the outside, stiff arming one, two, three players before he finally gets drug out of bounds. But this rushing attack been doing really well for California. I think Bloomsburg's really worried about the pass. They're not focusing on the run. That's giving California a lot of success in the middle. First and 10, California. Single back set. McCabe to throw, looking right. Complete to Jackson at the 12-yard line. And he's pushed to the turf by Jesse Cooper. A little short wide receiver flat right there. Does the trick. Just keeps Bloomsburg honest on the short pass. A little bit of a West Coast offense. See California started to run the ball on first down. Just go for those short, quick, easy completions. See Jackson make the play. Ends up going down there. Nice job by California. He's getting what they could on that first down. Sets up a second and manageable four right about now. So California has that option. They could try to throw for the end zone, then get it on third down, or they could just try to run the ball up the middle to get the first on this play. Lots of space in the left side of the field as California's on the far right hash. Coming into motion. It's number 41 for California. Hand up up the middle number of Dane Williams. Spin Dane move between Williams. the safeties. And he's going to be stopped just shy of the goal line. First and goal, California. Down there you see California is running that ball once again. Nice little inside trap right there. Gives Dane Williams a lot of room up the middle. Gets into that second and third layer before Bloomberg defender can even put a hand on him. That says California with a very nice first and goal from the one. Andy, my guess is at 41 it'd be Chase DiCarlo since they've gotten the new uniforms. Hand off to Williams up the middle, across the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Dane Williams pushes the pile forward and gives California the first lead of the game. And uh, that's what California does, that opening drive. You really got to like what they did. Nice balanced attack, didn't rely too much on the pass. Did a nice job just, you know, slowing things down, making the run happen. See right there, Dane Williams up the middle. Nice job just lowering the shoulder, pushing those linemen back, getting what he could to get that California touchdown. 
Hagerman in to attempt the extra point. He looked good last week. And that one is blocked by Bloomsburg. And recovered at the three yard line and taken down. So it'll stay six to nothing. Early in the game now, seems like it's significant. You never know. Mix extra peak could come back to haunt you in a game like this. California leads Bloomsburg six to nothing. The high school football game of the week returns for its 21st season on CU TV. With the hardest hits, he lunges for the first down and what a hit! Best plays. One man to beat, and he will get into the end zone. For the Brentwood score. All signs point to a great game here tonight. A new high school high school hot dog. It's high school football on CU TV this fall. On the offense! Brandon Jackson in the backfield. Far gonna drop back, hand it off to Jackson, dive play up the middle. He's pushing defenders past the first down marker. Go right behind the center. Do you guys ever stop? Defensive line. Let's see if the Packers can push this one into the end zone. A scoring drive that takes five minutes or four minutes and 52 seconds off the clock that culminates in a one-yard touchdown run from Dane Williams put California on top six to nothing after the blocked extra point tackle made by Gabe Hernandez at the 28-yard line and the Huskies take the field. What an interesting dynamic they bring to the table, Andy, with Derek Price becoming Bloom's first ever freshman 1,000-yard rusher, the freshman of the year in the PSC East. It's backed up by another sensational youngster, and Kenny Domzowski, and then Dan Latour, the Russian quarterback, who, who has a serviceable arm on him as well. He does, and it's going to be interesting to see if Bloomsburg maybe tries to come out and fool California, maybe try to go to the air. If that is the case, I think you're going to have to look towards wide receiver for Bloomsburg, try to make the play. It's going to be, I think, Kyle Ream getting a lot of the passes by from Dan Latour today. High formation. Price takes the stretch handoff to the right. Four, California Derek sniffs Price. it out. Oh, Good look from them early on. Brandon Gordon making the stop. Gain of two for Derek Price. Andy, I just don't see that run being as successful as it was in the first meeting. There you see Derek Price and a fullback, Stefan Adams, who scored a touchdown last week, who serves as a change of pace for this offense. And California has seen their share of fullbacks in recent weeks. They have. It seems like as this year has gone on, the fullbacks from more and more of an integral part of an opponent's game plan against California. I think it started in Mercyhurst with Dave Stout and just kind of kept building and building. See how California can respond to the fullback today. Delay give to Price this time. will try to shed a defender and will not. That stop made by Jake Howe with the help of Terrence Hemsley. Middle run goes nowhere. Make it third down and seven now. California's linebackers look a lot more, what should I say, in sync than they did in this first meeting through two plays. They do. You see on the replay, nice job there by California making a play. You can see it right there, nice job. California's you know, shutting down the run. I think they realize now it's going to be in their favor in terms of weather. They're going to be able to shut down Bloomsburg through the air as well. See what happens. I think Terrence Johnson's going to have a lot to do with that. Latour's going to pass. Looks to the right, pump fake, and then thrown out and complete to Kyle Ream at the 42-yard line. The coverage by Trey Allen was there, but Ream goes up and makes a good grab. That was a nice route there by Kyle Ream as well. A nice job. Made Trey Allen think that he was going to go farther and did a nice job just biting back for a little 11-yard hook pattern. Allen just couldn't quite recover in time. Was nice coverage. Did almost make that play, but nice catch by Kyle Ream. You talk about Kyle Ream, what he's done this year. 44 receptions coming in in this game. Next closest receiver, 11. So I think Kyle Ream is going to be the one target that I think Blooms are going to go to time and time and time again through the air. Now 44 catches for 760 yards and 13 TDs. Ream the number one target on this squad of the Huskies. Price, draw play at the middle, jukes back to his right and is then brought down by Jake Howe, gain of four on the play. And that dive play, that's something we saw every now and then from Bloomsburg in the first matchup between these two teams, but they're having so much success with the stretch play, I think they just kind of abandoned the dive. But if they can get that dive working, California's going to have to you know, play up the middle, and that could open that stretch play right back up. Just under eight minutes to play in the first quarter now. California leading 6 to nothing. Bloomsburg about to cross midfield, motion to the left. Under center, Price lost the 
Looks like Latour is going to call an audible at the line. And off to Price now. Delayed give again, makes one man miss, and he has the speed, takes it towards the sideline. Butler to beat, sheds Terrence Hemsley, and he'll be caught by Terrence Johnson at the 10-yard line. This should be first down and goal for the Huskies. He has some great speed, does Derek Price. Looks like Wendell Brown on the other side for California, just maybe a little bit quicker and a little bit smaller. He is, and you know, nice job right there by Dan Latour recognizing the California defense. He saw California was playing man-to-man -man coverage, had the linebacks and secondary really spread out covering all the receivers. Gave Price an opportunity to go right up the middle, broke a couple tackles, nice game there for Bloomsburg. And up to Price, bouncing it outside. He's got the speed to get to the corner, and he does. Touchdown, Huskies. Derek Price rushes for his seventh touchdown of the season, and the Huskies have tied this game at six. Rut row time, I think, if you're California, the way Bloomsburg just ran that ball in that first drive. Nice job there. See, on the end, take the ball. A nice cutback right there, and you see just complete seal to the outside. Nice job by Bloomsburg. The offensive line just doing what they had to do, sealing everything. Pretty much giving Derek Price that entire half of the field. John Kenny again for the extra point. This will give Bloomsburg the lead. It's up and it is straight through the middle and good. Kenny doesn't miss. He didn't miss that one. Seven to six, Bloomsburg leads. The offense of the Vulcans comes back onto the field after this on CUTV. Hey, Katie, do you have the PSAC championship game from 1995? Uh, thanks. For all your high school football information, turn to High School Roundup on CU TV. Valley Independent Sports Editor Brian Herman shares his football knowledge of the Mon Valley and beyond. Look forward to this guy playing in the next couple of years. Go ahead and take a look at our weekly pick'em. I can't see anybody in uh, double A beating them this year. For highlights, standings, and analysis of local high school football, turn to High School Roundup on CU TV. Bloomsburg in a shorter scoring drive than California, taking three minutes and six seconds off the clock. Drives 72 yards and scores on a 10-yard run from Derek Price. Freddie Backo bobbles the kickoff, but he'll pick it up and go nowhere. Down at the 25-yard line for the Vulcans. Not exactly the start they are looking for defensively, but this offense is going to come onto the field and try to snatch the lead right back. And we'll be interested to see what California tries to do here. We saw a nice job in that first drive, just kind of evening up the run and the pass. Just take a look at Cal's storylines. I mean, you see right there, second consecutive Elite Eight appearance, second time they've been in this regional final. One last year, of course. Four and one against nationally ranked teams so far this year. This will be yet another matchup against Bloomsburg and also California winning 24 of the last 26 games. One of those two losses coming to Bloomsburg earlier this year. First and 10, California single back formation. McCabe to throw. Out to his left, complete to A.J. Jackson on the short hook out. Forward progress should give A.J. no more than three yards. It's going to be second down and seven to go. We see so far in this game, Kevin McCabe really looking to A.J. Jackson early. It seems like throughout the year, McCabe's kind of focused on one receiver, whether it be Jackson or Marcel Pastano. Seems like this game early, it's going to be Jackson. Same formation for California, mirrored to the other side. 6.15 to play in the first quarter. Bloomsburg showing the 4-3. Hand off to Williams. Cut back up the gut. Be good for a few. The stop made by Dan Tillotson. Six-foot senior linebacker from Springfield, Virginia. But Dane gains about five. It'll be third down and a yard and a half to go for the Vulcans. That's a nice job by, Jane, by Dane Williams. Nice field vision, does a nice job seeing the cutback lane to the left, hits the hole hard, is able to get a nice game there and give California a nice short third and one. The Bloom crowd rises to their feet. 
Looking to help their Huskies here at Redmond Stadium. Play fake, McCabe rolling, dumped into the flat. Nice adjustment to make the catch by Chase DiCarlo. And he gets to the 40 yard line. First down, California. Nice job there, California. They came out in the single back. He got a little bit worried. I thought they were going to try to run the ball without the fullback in the backfield. However, once again, nice play fake there by McCabe. We've seen it all year. He's able to get rid of that ball. Ball gets tipped. Nice adjustment there by DiCarlo. Picks that one up. Was able to get a couple yards after the catch and gets the first down. Andy, I'm looking. We're calling that Chase DiCarlo, and I know it is because of the tattooed crosses on his calves. That's the best way to identify him. So a number change for Chase DiCarlo, and maybe a change of pace as he makes a big play on third and one for California. That ball easily could have dropped, but DiCarlo hustles back and makes the grab, and on first down, California goes nowhere. Let's see you. A bit of a scuffle there after the play. A few players get in there shoving each other around. But on the play, I mean, California's trying to do what they can with the running game. Nice job by Blooms, which just kind of shut everything down in the middle. Dan Williams didn't even have anywhere to cut back to right there. Only gets one yard on the carry. It'll be second down and eight on the 41-yard line. Four and a half to play in this first quarter. Both offenses efficient thus far have kept the clock moving. Fast-paced quarter here at Redmond Stadium. Play fake again. McCabe looking right. Quick out to Marcel Pistano. Complete. Pistano fights for an extra yard or two. Couldn't shed Jesse Cooper, but that's a solid gain for California on second down, bringing up third and three. And California once again moves a man into motion to give those trips wide receivers to the right. Bloomsburg drops back. It looks like they're going to be content to give up those five and six yard out patterns. That time was Marcel Pistano. See both quarterbacks, well, pretty much everybody in the secondary, playing about 10 yards back from the line of scrimmage. Really gives California a lot of buffer room in the middle, and they're able to make that completion. Tight set for the Vulcans. Garver motions to the left. Now Gumbert in motion as well. McCabe's throwing, he looks out, up high, looking for Pistano, incomplete, beautifully defensed by Oscar Rivera, and California will have to punt. Uh, what, what can you say, that ball's a little bit overthrown, but you got to give a nod to Oscar Rivera, looks like Pistano is still going to be able to come up with that ball one-handed. See on the replay, Rivera does a nice job, did a nice job wrapping his arms around Pistano. Yes, he did go high, tried to deflect that ball, but he didn't just kind of hit him with the shoulder and allow Pistano to make the play still. Wrapped around him, made sure that he brought him down to the ground. That helped cause the incomplete pass. Jesse Cooper back to return for Bloomsburg. He's at the 11. He is dangerous. Fiorenza, he's had a boomer of a leg all season and looks good again. This should be down in favorable position for California. It'll be at the 8. And that's where the Husky offense will come onto the field. Bloomsburg so good on the run. On the first drive, a drive that went 72 yards and ended in a 10-yard run from Derek Price. And now California's defense back to the drawing board. We said those linebackers looked good early, and they did through two plays, but Bloomsburg opened it up. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned yet, Andy, uh, California's sporting some new unis today. They have. It's kind of a welcome change. I mean, California, at first glance, they almost look the same. as You see Bloomsburg storylines on there right now. 7-6 and six all time in the NCAA playoffs. 5-1 and one right there at home. Also... 2-0 all-time in regional final games at home. So Bloomsburg trying to keep that perfect record intact here today. High formation, handoff to Price. Delayed give. Huge seam again, and Terrence Johnson will make the stop. But Price has enough for a first down. And you said uh-oh early. I'm going to echo that right now. It is uh-oh time for the Vulcans. Uh, offensive lineman, the big hogs. For Bloomsburg starting to push around the Cal defensive line. And we've seen you know, the majority of the handoffs have begun for big games have been draw plays, and I think you got to give a nod to Bloomsburg wide receivers for running the routes downfield, sucking the California secondary back 15, 20 yards back on the field. Gives Price a lot of running room up front once the offensive line takes care of the front seven. And I again, the Twins to the right of the tour this time. And off to Price, looking to bounce it to his left. This time, nowhere to go. And the stop made by double dubs. Willie Walker gain a two on that play. That was a nice job there by Willie Walker. Did a nice job shedding the block at the line of scrimmage. You can see right there on the left side of your screen, Walker just throws the offensive line right off him. Make sure he wraps up Price down low right around the waist so he doesn't have any type of leverage against him. Brings him right down to the ground for a short gain. Second and eight, 233 to play in the first quarter. Bloomsburg at their own 21. 
Cal in their 3-4. Hand off to Price again. Splits the defense. And Juan Butler makes the most important tackle perhaps of the season so far because Bloom would have broken this game open and Price taking that one all the way. And Butler was without a doubt the last man to beat. Yeah, he was. Bloom's are once again. I mean, this runs out. A little yeah. bit of a draw play in California. The front seven just, you know, not real sure if it's going to be a runner or a pass. The linebackers have to freeze for that second. Allows Bloomsburg offensive line to get downfield, make those blocks. Juan Butler saves what probably was going to be a touchdown right there. Ben Weber motions to the right. I form twins again for Bloomsburg. Darren Burns showing blitz on the far side. Latour rolling right. Good blocking up front, and that one is incomplete. Dropped by Corey Steiger at about midfield. The six-foot sophomore from Williamsport would certainly like to have that one back because he had enough separation to pick up first down and a long set of yards. Boy, see on the replay, nice job right there rolling out by Latour. Nice job by Bloomsburg blocking to the outside. See that ball? Looks like it hit him right in the hands, and they always say if he hits you in the hands, you have to make the catch. Didn't quite happen there. Sets Bloomsburg up in the second and 10. 147 to play in the first quarter. Bloom at their own 29 now. Second and 10. Gaping hole on the right side of the California defensive line, and that is exactly where Bloomsburg would run. California able to close it up pretty quickly. Brandon Gordon in on that stop for California with Darren Burns. Actually, it had been the left side of California's defensive line, the right of the offensive line for Bloomsburg, which... Again, is where they run. And Andy, uh, what's up with that split between Walker and Gordon, uh, leaving almost three offensive linemen in between them? I'm not sure, Josh. It's kind of interesting. I think part of that may just be how much trust you're giving to Willie Walker. You figure he's going to take a double team the majority of the plays, as will Brandon Gordon. That I think that kind of maybe allows your linebackers to run a little bit more freely as we see it again on this play. Third and five. Vulcans teasing at a blitz. Diamond's going to come, and they're going to hand it off, and Price is stopped in the backfield by Sam Fickeris, and that'll force the Huskies to punt. Great penetration by Fickeris, and it'll be fourth down. Nice job by California. It's the first time they've been able to really pin the ears back and go on the blitz there. Nice job by California. Got to give Fickeris a hand. He was blocked right there by the center, just shut of the block. I think those blitz from the linebackers kind of made Bloomsburg rush that play a little bit too much. Up forces fourth down. Vickers, 6'2", 275 pounds. He's a sophomore for Mayfield Heights, Ohio. But I go back to sophomore, plays like a senior, and he's still got two more years here at California. Deep punt fielded at the 24-yard line. Josh Gumbert picks up about six yards on the return. So not too bad there, but back to Fickers, Andy. I mean, he already seems like he's been here for, for three or four years, and he just hasn't. But he plays like a veteran on the line of scrimmage, and he's a big reason California was able to win the West undefeated this year at 7-0. That defense really came together late in the season, and, and Fickers might be uh, the glue that holds that line together. Bloom did not win the East. Westchester did, but Bloom through a solid season. We get the number one ranking in the region. And therefore, they host today. Chase DiCarlo comes into motion for California. Play fake by McCabe. He's going to take a shot towards the corner, and that one is complete to Marcel Pistano. First down for the Vulcans. Not, nice job right there by Marcel Pistano. Just runs that little out pattern. California not afraid to come out throwing the ball, and I like it so far. Really, you know, making, doing a nice job of keeping that Bloomsburg defense on their feet. Nice throw by McCabe. Got it right there with, through two Bloomsburg defenders. California's able to move the chains. California will have a first down to begin the second quarter of play here at Redmond Stadium. And it was an exciting first quarter in this NCAA round three matchup between the Huskies and the Vulcans. Bloomsburg leading 7-6. Second quarter next right here on CU. For the latest news from the Mon Valley and its surrounding areas, turn it to CU TV News Center. Our reporters and anchors bring the news, entertainment, sports, and weather live right into your home. It all started here in Fayette County's SPCA. Locals say that they've been seeing an increase in traffic. Enchanted, your classic Disney fairy tale. News, entertainment, sports, weather. CU TV News Center. Live every Thursday at 5 on CU TV. 
Hey, Katie, do you have the PSAC championship game from 1995? Uh, thanks. About to start the second quarter of play. California has a first down. Wendell Brown shakes a defender in the backfield, now cuts through a seam, has a first down, and he'll be stopped after picking up 12 yards. That tackle made by Alex Landis beyond midfield. Nice shot by Wendell Brown. Looks like he's going to be wrapped up after about a three-yard loss. So it's nice job just using that open hand to once again just shed the tackler, cuts it back up the middle following the blocks. And we noticed Wendell Brown, he's had some fumbling problems. You see right there, it looks like every time he's about ready to get contact, he's finally starting to take his open hand, start covering that ball up, and I think that's a really good sign for California. Wendell Brown is a home run hitter. He did hit a dinger earlier this year against Bloomsburg. McCabe throwing over the middle. Pistano gets decked but brings in the ball anyhow. First down for California. That hit delivered by Michael Varanavage. What a snag by Marcel Pistano. And watching Marcel Pistano as he got up there, just kind of looked at the Bloomsburg defender and said, that's the best you can do. You know, you can just imagine if Son has a huge smile on his face right now as California gets another first down. Great job holding on to that ball in traffic. He knew he was going to take a licking on that play. Still did a nice job just bringing that ball and securing it. Make sure California can move the chains once again. California in the eye. Simple handoff to Wendell Brown, and he may have gotten past the line of scrimmage. Gang tackle by Bloomsburg leading the charge. Baron Avage, the man who put that hit on Pistano. Aaron Average, a six foot, 220 pound sophomore from Philadelphia, and that time he got the better of California as opposed to Pistano on the last play. It's one of the few times he's seen California run more of a sprint play than anything. You talk about Wendell Brown, took a step laterally, took a step to his right before he went towards the play, towards the ball, and I think that kind of allowed Bloomsbury to kind of step up and make a play defensively right there. Shotgun for California. McCabe to throw over the middle, complete to Jackson, makes one man miss. And is brought down by the pair of safeties. Landis will get credit for the tackle, but it's a first down California inside the red zone now. Ball on the 17-yard line. Jackson showing some good speed after the catch there and making that initial defender miss. And that's something that last couple weeks, A.J. Jackson's really, you know, shown that ability, that agility, if you will, to shed defenders. Beginning of the year, you know, you saw him kind of just kind of run over defenders. Now he's using his speed, using that agility, making defender miss, getting those extra yards. Tight set for California in the eye. They're going to run towards that tight side of the line of scrimmage, and Dane Williams will fall forward and gain two on the play after the stretch out. And that's an all right first down run for the Vulcans with 12.45 to play here in the second quarter, threatening to score again and take the lead back. And Dane Williams did a nice job on that play. He followed the blockers, realized he wasn't going anywhere. If he kept that going, cut it right to his left as quickly as he could. Got as many yards as he could right there, and I think California will take that. Watching the field, these past couple plays getting a little bit chippy out there. Looks like a couple players kind of pushing each other after the play. Have to see if that festers in anything more as this game goes on. Second down, eight yards to go. California keeping the tight set. I think they want Jackson isoed on the near side of the field, and they may have it. They're going to look in his direction. There's the fade to Jackson. Adjustment made, catch made, touchdown, Vulcans. A.J. Jackson using the size to his advantage. California gets exactly what they want, and now they have a lead. I love the fade route, Josh. That's all, that's all it comes down to. I love it every time I see it, and right there we see California run it to perfection. Nice job by A.J. Jackson. A nice job you know, breaking towards that back corner of the end zone. You know, kind of a little farther than expect fade routes to go. McCabe just throws it up there. Jackson does a nice job. He made sure that he kept the cornerback Oscar Rivera behind him. He was able to be in front of Rivera. He knew McCabe was going to throw it a little bit shorter than usual. He was able to kind of shield his body off from the defender, make the touchdown catch. Hagerman will jam this extra point through the uprights. California leads 13-7. We've got 12 minutes to play in the second quarter. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome to Valley Views. I'm your host, Bob Burke from the Valley Independent. Bob Burke knows the Mon Valley. 
to catch special guests discuss issues of the Mon Valley, turn it to Valley Views on CUTV. Uh, a local program being planned to put more emphasis on, on, on this whole water issue. And something we're going to commit to for the long term. Is That's one of the promises of the knee you were talking about, which has an easier recovery. To see Bob Burke attack Mon Valley issues, turn it to Valley Views on CUTV. Does peace really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary, we believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world, dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace. Rotary. Welcome back to CUTV Sports. 13-7, California leading the Bloomsburg Huskies early in the second quarter. Kickoff is away and fielded at the 14-yard line by Tyler Guys. Guys breaks it to the near sideline, and Darren Burns wraps him up at the 41. A big tackle. That should fire up the defense as they come onto the field, but the damage is done. Andy, we're going to have another look at the touchdown. As we do, why don't you give us some statistics from the first quarter? They talk about those first quarter statistics, not including that touchdown pass right there. Kind of what we expected. Bloomsburg rushed for 85 yards. California threw for 55 yards. California had more in the time of possession. They had the ball for 8 minutes and 45 seconds compared to Bloomsburg 6.15. So California I'm kind of controlling the clock a little bit, if you will. However, until at the, that point in the game, it was 7-6. Bloomsburg, California, that touchdown takes the lead 13-7. And Andy, as we watch that again, I, I couldn't help but, you know, let a slight grin come over my face because... I mean, how do, you, how do you defend that? There's nobody in the PSC, maybe Division Two, that can defend A.J. Jackson in single coverage. Oh, it, I mean, I don't – you got me, Josh. I don't know how you can make that play happen. A.J. Jackson is just so tall and so athletic. I mean, it's not just the fact that he's 6'6". He has huge arms as well. He can go up, you know, six inches higher than anyone else. So he can jump off the ground. You know, great job by A.J. Jackson making that play happen. Look at this chuck and pitch complete to Kyle Ream from Dan Latour. A nice lob downfield, and he gets it over two defenders. Looked like Juan Butler and Trey Allen got beat by Kyle Ream, and just like that, the Huskies are in the red zone. And I think that's where you see where Dan Latour is at his most comfortable, when he's outside rolling while he's on the run, throwing the ball while he's on the run. So to roll to left, throw that, just heave that ball downfield, and just let Ream just run right up under it. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Hand off to Domzalski. Stopped in the backfield by Brett Diamond and the rest of the California linebackers. It'll be second down, but that had to sting a little bit for California momentum after the big score. And looks like Bloomsburg's poised to take it right back in. We're in for a good one here today, Andy. There's no two ways about it. We are. You know, it was interesting talking about this before this game happened. We were trying to figure out what was going to happen in this game, and general consensus was it was going to be a close game, much like the first matchup. We didn't know, you know, just how big of a factor the weather is in the last matchup. We knew it was a factor, but how big it was we weren't sure, and I think we're seeing it so far in this game right now. Zemzowski's going to get another carry. Equal to no success right there. Juan Butler stiffs Zemzowski at the 17-yard line, and... Domzowski just seems to have a little, a little less of a step than Derek Price, not as quick as we see Price subbing back into the game. Uh, an efficient running back, but at the same size as Price and slower, probably not what you're looking for against Cal today. No, I don't think so, because you see California in both these pass plays have been able just to react quickly to the run play happening, be able just to do what they can. Nice job there by California to shut down the run on those plays. It's third and nine with 10-15 to play in the second quarter. Big first down conversion attempt here for Bloomsburg as they'd like to answer with a touchdown rather than a field goal. Snap to Latour, blitz from the corner, a shovel pass to Derek Price towards the end zone and in, touchdown. Bloomsburg, excellent play call and the Huskies will tie this game back up at 13. Bloomsburg just, you know, they did what they needed to do and that's find some way to throw the ball, if you will, keeping California honest passing. Same time getting that ball into the hands of your playmaker, Derek Price, let him do what he can. Nice yellow pass there by Latour. Nice job by the offensive line, make sure they didn't get too far downfield too quickly. Was able to really make that play happen. Price was able to get in the end zone. Bloomsburg looks like they are poised to take the lead back. 
Extra point is up, and that is good. Bloomsburg recaptures the lead. Under 10 minutes to play in the half. It's Huskies 14, Vulcans 13. Stay with us here on CUTV. I mean, come on now. Exactly how intimidating is a Vulcan? I think we can do a little bit better than some mythical god of fire. Yeah, we need something more forceful, more intimidating, more in your face than that wimp blaze. Does peace really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary, we believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace. Rotary. Redmond Stadium is bearing witness to an excellent third round NCAA playoff game. At least in the early going, kickoff is away after Bloomsburg scores. The Vulcan offense will be coming back onto the field, but Freddie Bacco is going to attempt to give them as good a position as possible, and it's going to be real good position. Bacco returns it to the other 48, Bloomsburg 48, that is. It'll be first down for California. Freddie Bacco, some explosion on the kickoff return. It's something we've seen throughout the entire year. You talk about these California kick returners. Number two in the nation, averaging 27 yards per return. We see a lot more right there by Freddie Bacco. Bacco's already turned one kick for a touchdown. Did that against Gannon. See him almost break another one right there for the Vulcans. First and 10, California. Bacco actually got it to the 46 before being shoved out of bounds. 9.50 to play. Cal in the single back. Motion into the eye form. To call the up man, Williams the deep back. Enough of a hole for Dane to pick up six yards. Second about four to go now for the Vulcans. A nice job there by California going back to that rushing attack after the passing game was so effective last drive. Really, you know, making Bloomsburg just stay back on their feet. Don't really know what to do, whether to try to blitz or disrupt the run, in which case California go over the top for the pass, or if they drop back for pass coverage, California's going to come with the run. That balanced offensive attack is, you know, really one of the biggest reasons California's been so successful offensively this year. Pistano comes into motion for California now on second and four. And up to Williams, a little counter run. And cuts it back to his right, but he'll be tackled by Greg Myers, third and three for California after the short run by Dane. Yeah, and the offense line for California just can't quite get enough penetration into that defensive line for Blooms. We're going to allow Dane Williams to get a lot, get the legs turning, get a big game there. It's going to be California. Still, you know, a nice third and three. So second down didn't work. Still have a nice opportunity to pick up this third down because it's so short. 8.42 to play in the first here, first half here at Redmond Stadium. McCabe in the shotgun takes the snap. He's going to look to run in a shovel pass of his own, and it's complete to Pistano for the first down. I think that was improvised, not designed. I think it was too. I saw Dane Williams coming out of the backfield, ended up tripping. I think he may have tripped over the referee. And I think McCabe was kind of looking at Williams' way. He saw him fall down. He just kind of tried to make it happen with his legs. And out of nowhere, it comes Marcel Pistano in the middle of the field. <laughs> what can you say about that? I mean, it's something that you see happen a lot. Let's be honest, it doesn't work all that often. But it works right there for California, and they get another first down. McCabe saw a tour do it. He said, nah, son. Here's a shovel pass. First down. Hand off to Wendell Brown. Ducks underneath of Marcus Zimmerman, but maybe much ado about nothing because he'll only gain two yards on that run, and it'll be second and eight. And that's really the first time we've seen Wendell Brown really try to take the ball between the tackles. We've seen him go to the outside on numerous occasions, but right there, he tried a little bit of a cutback there. Nice job by Bloomsburg to kind of collapse down on the offensive line, make sure they stop Wendell Brown for he can really get the speed moving for California. Brown is the single back for California. You got to think they're going to look to get a pitch or an off tackle to run to here soon. They will on that play. 
bounces off Dan Tillotson in the backfield and falls forward for a nice gain on that play. They're going to give him four, and it will be third and four. Nice job once again by the California offensive line. Did a nice job just sealing off their blocks right there. You can see on the screen for California was number 75. Matt Schuer on the line for California. Did a nice job sealing off the defensive end. Made sure he gave Wendell Brown a chance to take the corner, get as many yards as he could. Shotgun for California. Gumbert in the slot to the near side. Play fake to the first back, Brown, and then a give to Dane Williams. And that is a first down for California. First time I've seen them run that play this season. That was something else right there. That is an action that needs to happen quick when you're faking a run in the backfield and then delaying draw to the other back. It does. And you saw it happen just quick enough as Bloomsbury kind of created a little pocket around the running backs, I think. You know, that little fake hand after Wendell Brown was just enough to freeze those linebackers so Dane Williams was able to get the ball, get up the middle, and I think that kind of shows what speed can do for your team right there as Wendell Brown got the fake. They had to respect his speed. That allowed Dane Williams to get the first. Cal again into the red zone. Play fake for McCabe with time. Dump off to Chase DiCarlo. DiCarlo will be upended by Michael Varanavage at the 10-yard line. That play good for seven. Nice job by Dan Williams in the backfield. Looked like a little bit of a miscommunication right there. Looked like he's going to let the blocker get in. Does a nice job kind of coming back to the defender. Does a nice job blocking him, allowing McCabe to sit back in the middle of that pocket, end up finding DiCarlo across the middle. Give California a nice second and short once again. Single back formation for California. DiCarlo into motion. It's second and four. Hand off to Williams up the middle. Keeping those legs moving, trying to pick up the first down yardage. I think he's going to be just short. Dominique Price and Dan Tillotson on the stop for Bloomsburg, and it is indeed short third and one. And we do have an injury on the field, and that looks to be Marcus Zimmerman, number 78 for Bloomsburg. The 5'11", 265-pound sophomore from Lilith's, Pennsylvania. And Andy, one thing I noticed uh, while we're uh, looking at Zimmerman on the, the field there is uh, we had some warm him up going on the sideline, and I don't know why. Dan Latour appears to be fine, but uh, number 30, Mike Wagner, the freshman backup quarterback, is throwing passes, and he has his helmet next to him on the sideline. Now he has since taken his seat. I uh, don't know if maybe it's just some gadget play Bloom's planning to run, but Wagner is warming up. Look at Bloomsburg, uh, founded in 1838, a little older of a university than California, but let's watch this play one more time. Marcus Zimmerman, lower left corner of your screen right here. And he kind of looks like his leg's going to get rolled up on at the end of this play. Right there. And he's under that pile now. And it's kind of tough to tell, Josh, because it looked like he was down a little bit before that even happened, as it looks like. It's going to be brought up to his feet now. And it wasn't Marcus Zimmerman. I, I misread the number. It was actually 94 Earl McNeil, the senior from Lansdowne, Pennsylvania. He's a big boy, 6'2", 303 pounds, and he's going to walk it off under his own power. And we may see him in this game again later. There's Zimmerman by his side, who was never hurt to begin with, and, and McNeil hoping uh, that he and Zimmerman will once again be playing out on that defensive line together. But it's third and one for California now. I formation, Williams the tailback. Hand off to Williams. Good read by the Bloom linebackers. And they'll stuff Williams in the backfield, leading the charge. Michael Varanavage, fourth down and five now for California. The field goal unit going to have to take the field. And fair and average, you said it, Josh, just read that play beautifully, beautifully came right off the end. Kathleen didn't pick him up, so to get Dane Williams in the backfield. Stopped him for a rather large loss there. It's going to force Ke Kevin Hagerman to come and try to kick the field goal. This will be a 28-yarder for Hagerman. Kicks a little low, but it looks like it's sliced wide to the right. No good. Hagerman misses. It's still 14 to 13, and 
And now that extra point miss seems to be huge as we could be tied at 14 here between the Huskies and the Vulcans instead. Cal continues to trail some highlights from earlier in this game. There's the first touchdown run by Williams. And you see not to be outdone. California's second touchdown on the way. See this fade route once again. Nice job, A.J. Jackson. The shields the defender was able to get up, bring that ball down. Now, now we're going to take a look at Bloomsburg's touchdowns. You see right there, Derek Price, just a huge play right there. Bloomsburg adds a second touchdown. Take a one-point lead, 14-13. Latour remains under center. He appears to be fine. He's kind of jogging around on the sideline just to stay loose. Hand off to Domzowski, and this his most successful carry of the game to the 27-yard line. The tackle made by Brandon Livesey, but it's a nine-yard run for Domzowski, and it actually got to the 29, so it'll be second and one. And you see on the replay what Domzowski can do for you. You see Brett Diamond shed his blocker, has him by one leg. It looks like he's still able to shake loose, but make a second and short. Another give to Domzowski. This time, nothing to go for. Stopped in the backfield, Brandon Gordon and Willie Walker making the stop. It'll be third and two. Nice job there by California. Just really attacked the middle of that offensive line for Bloomsbury, pushed him back into the backfield, allowed those linebackers to get some good penetration, end up wrapping up Domzowski in the backfield. 3.35 to go, crucial third down stop for the Vulcans. They'd like to have a chance to score before the half. Need to get Bloom off the field to do so. Goal line formation for Bloomsburg. They're going to sneak it. And Latour has crossed the 30-yard line, and that's what he needed for a first. This should be enough. The chains move. First down, Huskies. The California just can't quite make the stop. There's a tour just falls forward and has enough to get that first down. Now you talk about California's defense. I think they're going to be content right now to hold Bloomsburg to three and four yard runs. So the clock's running out here in this first half, only about three minutes left. So if California can kind of maybe not stop but at least slow down this Bloomsburg offensive rushing attack, they're going to have a good chance to go in the locker room with a chance. Three minutes to play in the half. They fake the stretch, and Latour wants to throw. He's rolling in the backfield, makes some space, throws downfield, and completes it to Stefan Adams, the fullback, getting open downfield and being knocked out of bounds by Terrence Johnson. That is a first down for Bloomsburg. Another fullback with soft hands, Andy. Yeah, nice job there. Nice job. You realize that Latour's under pressure. You see number 12 right there just kind of hanging out. Then he seemed to take off downfield. Nice job, Latour. Finally, looks like Darren Burns. He's kind of tripped over the carpet out there on the field turf. Looks like he was going to be responsible for covering Stefan Adams. Tripped, gave Adams a chance to make the catch, make the play. Hand off to Domzowski, splits the line of scrimmage and is suplexed to the turf by Terrence Johnson at the 37-yard line. And again, the Vulcan linebackers and the defensive coordinator shaking their heads. The middle has been busted wide open again. And you know what the scariest thing is, Josh? It's that Derek Price is on the sideline, staying fresh for the second half. Mm -hmm. Going to have Domzowski in there right now, just running up the middle, wearing down this California defense, just you know, really pounding Vulcans up the middle. Gives Price the ability to be the home run hitter to the outside. Twins to the left of Latour. Hand off to Domzowski. Jake Howe sniffs this play out. And Willie Walker lets a shove go at the end of the play. Everyone in the stadium saw it. And Double Dub's going to get away with one there. No yellow flag comes in. Domzowski gains one, maybe two. Looks like they gave him two on the scoreboard. It's second and eight, 140 to play in the half. I formation. Twins to the left of Latour again. California in the 3-4. Blitz coming off the corner. Hand off to Domzowski. Stuffed again in the backfield. Loss of yards this time. Darren Burns finishes the playoff. With the help of Brett Diamond, it'll be third and ten. You see Darren Burns coming in now for Terrence Hemsley. The starter, Darren Burns, going to get his spot back here for the second quarter. It's a nice job there. Just a nice job coming in from the other side of the field. Makes the play happen. We're going to set Blue Reserve for the third and 11. Wholesale change for California defensively. Dropping back into a dime with three rushers. That'd be more of a quarter, I guess, then. And California wasn't happy with it, so they'll take a timeout, Andy, on third and 10, 11 yards 
You really can give that cushion underneath. You just don't want to give up a first down. Yeah, I think that's kind of the scariest thing. You saw a couple players kind of running towards the defensive line. I don't think they're real sure if they're supposed to be lined up at linebacker on the D line. A little bit of confusion kind of caused that time off to occur, but I think California's all right with taking that. That's their first time out of the half with only a minute left. You know, it's going to be more important for them to maybe use this timeout, make sure they can stop Bloomsburg on third down, not use it, have something happen. Bloomsburg gets the first down, gets a chance to put points on the board. How about the AFCA poll, Andy? California finishing the season at number eight. Maybe not as much respect as they deserve. I'm sure they'd like to be seated a little bit higher, but the top eight teams do remain in the country. All of them playing today, Grand Valley playing Minnesota Duluth, Northern Alabama playing Delta State, and Northwest Missouri playing Abilene Christian. We'll have score updates for you later on today, but uh, those, those top seven, I should say, all still alive. It Bloomsburg, the one outsider. I'll tell you what, Josh, I'll give you an update right now. North Alabama had a Delta State 14-7 in the second quarter. Delta State is the one seed in that region, so one versus two, two is up right now. Third and 11, Latour is taking a shot. He has Kyle Ream. It's intercepted by Patrick Swearinger at the one yard line. California comes up with the stop they're looking for. And now they just need to run the clock out to take this 14 to 13 score to the locker room. That's a big play when Cal needed it. It's, it's huge, nice job by California. Looked like Latour had Ream going on the side. Looked like he had to step on Swearinger, just underthrows a little bit. Swearinger makes a nice adjustment to that ball. Ends up getting the interception. The only thing California's got to be worried about, they are backed up against their own end zone at the two-yard line right now. So California's going to have to make sure they get one to two yards each play. Make sure Bloomsburg, you know, maybe gets a chance to really not get the offense backed out there because you think what California might do. They might just try to run it up the middle, get one to two yards, but Bloomsburg still has all three timeouts. They can call those timeouts. Still have 30 seconds left to try to make a play. So it's going to be interesting to see what California does here. If they just try to run the clock out, if maybe they go to the air, get that first down, then just call it a half. Bloomsburg, 47% uh, conversion rate on third down, though today they have not struck me as a team that is uh, overwhelmingly efficient on third down. First down play to Williams goes for six, but back to that, Andy. I mean, I mean, with Latour, he's a good quarterback, especially at this level. I mean, he can run an all right arm, but for those shots downfield, he's not Kevin McCabe, which, which is why I'm a little surprised that they've converted 47% of their third downs, given their strength of schedule in the PSC East. It's not that strong, and I'm sure their running game, they've been faced with a lot of third and ones or twos, and they can just run it. But really, they didn't have many more options whether than take a shot there on third and 11. I don't think Latour's the kind of guy that's going to sling a post pattern or a quick slant right over the middle and sneak it into traffic. Yeah, I agree, and... I mean, you talk about something else that could have run. I mean, they only ran the shallow pass. That got him a touchdown. So I think California is waiting for those gadget plays. Didn't happen there. And I think you said it. Latour just not quite the strongest arm. Looks like he throws better while he's out rolling out on the run. Ended up getting an interception on that play. Andy, I'm going to put you on the spot. After one half, uh, who do you like going forward to come out of this game? I know that's a coin toss. But what have you seen that, that might tell you who's going to win? It is a coin toss. I'm going to take California for the sole fact that they're a third quarter team. They've come out and just dominated teams in the third quarter this entire season. There's no reason to think they're not going to do it once again. I think California's going to be able to pull away in the third quarter and win this game. I think that's a great point. Let's see what coaches Conway Keller and Luckhart can say to their team in the locker room to get them pumped up for that third quarter. We've got a good one going here on CUTV. It's halftime between the Huskies and the Vulcans. Bloom leading 14 to 13. The second half is next right here on CUTV. Don't go anywhere. High School Football Game of the Week returns for its 21st season on CUTV. With the hardest hits. He lunges for the first down and what a hit. Best plays. One man to beat and he will get into the end zone. For the Brentwood score. All signs point to a great game here tonight. A new high school high school hot dog. It's High School Football on CUTV this fall. On the offense! Brandon Jackson in the backfield. Far gonna drop back, hand it off to Jackson. Dive play up the middle. He's pushing defenders past the first down marker. Go right behind the center. Do you guys ever stop? Defensive line. Let's see if the Packers can push this one into the end zone. 
what is CU TV's final Vulcan football broadcast of the season. You're being treated to perhaps the best game we've seen all year. It's 14 to 13, the Bloomsburg Huskies leading the Cal Vulcans in the third round of the NCAA Division II playoffs through one half. And through one half, Andy, what are our halftime statistics? You take a look, it's pretty balanced. Kind of surprised these two teams as balanced as they have been because you expect California to come out throwing the ball, Bloomsburg running the ball, we say that, but stats don't reflect that. California, four more yards offensively in terms of total offense, but California, the one thing you've got to look at, they're controlling the time possession, something they haven't done a lot this year. They have almost five more minutes of Bloomsburg, so I think if California can keep that up in the second half, they're going to have a chance to pull away in this game. And you mentioned how good of a third-quarter team it, Cal is, but both of these teams look like pretty good first-half teams when we move in and take a look at some of the highlights from that first half and uh, featured some big scoring plays and some smash mouth scoring plays. First for California, the long run that set up the touchdown from Dane Williams. This gained about 12 yards and a first down. And Dane would hammer it home on the subsequent play. The one yard touchdown run now on the other side. It's Derek Price making things happen for Bloomsburg. Off tackle to the right, he gets into the end zone untouched. Maybe a little stiff arm there, but he'd already basically crossed the end zone. And this fade pattern to A.J. Jackson, an absolute thing of beauty and a perfect pass from Kevin McCabe. Jackson makes the adjustment, hauls it in, and then the shovel pass from Dan Latour to Derek Price to score his second touchdown of the contest. And with that, the Huskies enjoy their 14-13 advantage. Andy, I said it immediately when it happened, and now I think it will, in fact, play a part in this game special teams that extra point getting blocked is this going to come back to haunt california later i i think it is i mean right now you see california down a point they're gonna have to gamble if they get in the end zone and try to go for two not only has it been an extra point they also missed a field goal in the second quarter so those special team plays could end up being vital jesse cooper still on his feet cutting back to the far side of this field and a lot of green in front of him and he's still on his feet. A lot of tackles being missed by California. Special teams playing a role. Jesse Cooper with one man to beat to the 10. Tripped up at the nine yard line by Patrick Swearinger. A shot to the neck of California as Jesse Cooper returns it some 80 yards to open the second half. And you hear a lot when you watch games about how players have to stay in their lanes. They have to stay in their lanes. It didn't happen there. See hyperspeed on the replay. And California just collapsed in on the returner. And that's just something you cannot do, as you see right there. Just time and time again, breaking tackle after tackle after tackle was Jesse Cooper. Now, Bluesburg gets a first and goal right off the bat in the third quarter. Eight yards to reach Paydirt. Motion man is, or excuse me, uh, Dylan Minner. And run to the right side. Goes for some two yards. California badly needing a stop here, Andy. They are, and I think that's a good way to start things off. Nice play there by Matt McClellan. Did a nice job breaking in on the offensive line. Able to make first contact right there with the ball carrier and see if California can keep this going here on second down. High formation, one wide receiver out to the left. It's Kyle Ream, tight set. Line stacked to the left of Dan Latour. Give to Price. Adams leads the way, and Price trips around the five-yard line. I'm not sure if Livesey got an arm out to trip Price up, but he certainly had the space to get home. It'll be third and goal. See, if We can see what happened on the replay to see Price break that one. Looks like he tripped over his own offensive lineman. Looks like it may have been number 74, Pat Casey, right there. He tripped over his own offensive lineman, did Derek Price. So California gets a little bit of a blessing in disguise. It's like Price may have been able to make a couple defenders miss getting to the end zone on that play. Huge third down play coming up for California. Twins to the right of Latour. Latour changes the play as he's behind the line. He's going to sneak it. Latour's got wheels, tries to spin off Ficarus, and he is stopped. I think Jake Howe came up and made the play. Interesting play call when you need five yards to run the QB sneak. And I know Latour is mobile, but now Bloomsburg will have to kick a field goal. That is huge for California. 
Yeah, interesting decision there by Dan Latour. I mean, I think he saw California linebackers from the outside blitzing. Thought maybe he'd be able to sneak his way right through the blitz, end up with no one in front for the touchdown. But California's defensive line just stands strong. Sam Frick is clogged up the middle. Latour can't get anything going. John Koenig versatile, automatic from this range. Field goal kick is up and good. No problems. And Koenig connects on the 25-yard field goal. Huskies lead 17-13. The Vulcans take the field for the first time in this half after these messages. Welcome to Valley Views. I'm your host, Bob Burke from the Valley Independent. Bob Burke knows the Mon Valley. To catch special guests, discuss issues of the Mon Valley, turn it to Valley Views on CUTV. Uh, a local program being planned to put more emphasis on, on, on this whole water issue. And something we're going to commit to for the long term. Is That's one of the promises of the knee you were talking about, which has an easier recovery. To see Bob Burke attack Mon Valley issues, turn it to Valley Views on CUTV. For all your high school football information, turn to High School Roundup on CUTV. Valley Independent Sports Editor Brian Herman shares his football knowledge of the Mon Valley and beyond. Look forward to this guy playing in the next couple of years. Go ahead and take a look at our weekly pick em. I can't see anybody in uh, double A beating him this year. For highlights, standings, and analysis of local high school football, turn to High School Roundup on CU TV. Welcome back to CU TV Sports coverage of Vulcan football, Andy. You got to consider that a bullet dodged for California. Basically a three and out uh, series. And they got the ball on the eight yard line after the kickoff return and hold Bloom to a field goal. Backo fields it at the 15 yard line and is stopped by Alex Landis at the 25 to Bloomsburg's offense for a moment, Andy. And they're predictable, if nothing else. You know they're running on first and second down. And and they stayed predictable on that, that last series and maybe trying to get too unpredictable on third down. Why not just let Latour drop back and throw and they sneak it and five yards is just too much for uh, guys like Jay Cal up the middle there and Latour stopped in the future. I think it's time to let Latour run a little play action on first or second down to keep California honest. They may have got this run figured out at some point. McCabe's going to look downfield for Jackson, who stretches out. It's incomplete coverage by Vince Browning, and that pass is just overthrown by McCabe. But, Andy, the play sort of had, had cut you off on the last point. But, I mean, I just think at some point uh, it'd be big for Bloomsburg to run a play fake on, on the Vulcans. Yeah, I agree. And I remember now going back to the first matchup these two teams played. Latour did a lot of rollout pass. He did a nice job, rolled out kind of his weak side, threw back across his body, made a lot of plays like that, though. I think you kind of saw that's how Dan Latour is most comfortable. I wouldn't be surprised to see Bloomsburg maybe try to run those kind of quick play action passes on the rollouts. 12-18 to play in the third quarter. Pistano goes in motion to the left of McCabe. Play fake. McCabe looking left. Complete to Josh Gumbert. Gumbert has nowhere to go. He is tackled by Oscar Rivera virtually at the line of scrimmage. Uh, the officials give him a yard, so it's third and nine. And that's the first time we've seen Bloomsburg really play up close on that quick out pattern. You saw defenders only about five yards from the line of scrimmage. By the time Gumbert got that ball, made the turn, he had two defenders all over him. That's why they held that to a short game. Third and nine, Redmond Stadium is alive. Shotgun, snap, a cave to pass. With time to Wendell Brown. Brown trying to make defenders miss. He cannot. He is stopped. It's fourth down. California is going to have to punt. The tackle made by Greg Myers. Three and out for Cal. And it's something, Josh, you take a look at. I think that's where California is kind of missing Brandon Lombardi coming out of the backfield, making those catches. I mean, Lombardi was healthy for California. He was one of the leading receivers on this team coming out of the backfield. Seemed like every time it was third and, you know, medium to long range, they always look for Brandon Lombardi coming out in a little circle pattern. Tried to hit Wendell Brown there, just didn't quite have enough agility to make the play happen. Fiorenza lets this kick go to the 15-yard line. Fielded by Jesse Cooper, dangerous on the kickoff return, snuffed out on the punt return. And on comes Bloomsburg offense. You almost feel a little more comfortable if you're a Bloomsburg fan with uh, the Huskies having some field to work with. 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Bloomsburg can do here on this drive. I think they're going to try to set that run up once again. Going to really try to take a lot of time off this clock because we talked about California being that quick strike team when it came into the third quarter. I think Bloomsburg is going to try to take as much time as possible off the clock, make sure California can't really produce on that. 10.45 to play in the third quarter as Bloomsburg starts its second drive of the second half. I formation, twins to the left of Dan Latour, 3-4 defense for the Vulcans. Hand off to Price, he'll bounce it outside, makes Brandon Livesey miss, and then he trips again seemingly. Burns and Walker going to get credit for the tackles, but Price picks up seven. And we see Derek Price didn't see him a whole lot in the second quarter. I think you can kind of see right there, he has that extra spring in his step come the third quarter. And a couple of Vulcan defenders missed. Finally, California can bring him down. Looks like the Turf Monster could be playing a, wreaking a little bit of havoc on both these teams. You saw Darren Burns fall earlier. So right there, Price looks like he just kind of got bitten by the turf here at Redmond Stadium. Cal showing blitz on the far side. Hand off to Price. Spins off a defender. Picks up the first down. Darren Burns makes the stop at the 31. And the Huskies move the chains again. Once again, Bloomsburg just keep doing what they're doing right now, just running that ball to Derek Price, allowing him just to take over this ball game. That's what it seems like he's going to end up doing here as California just can't quite stop him soon enough. Bloomsburg only needs those four or five-yard runs, and that's what they're getting so far. That's really going to help them out in this game. High formation. Twins to the right of Latour. Play fake. Here it is, and he'll have it wide open. That one complete to Ben Weber at the 42-yard line. And Weber is stopped by Juan Butler, but that play fake, you had to be waiting for it. And Cal just didn't know when to expect it. We didn't know when to expect it, but they run it, it works. Yeah, it was only a matter of time for you saw it. Nice shot there by Weber to make that play. Also another nice job just kind of shaking a tackle. He did that extra one to two yards. And you talk about Ben Weber. He's the tight end. Looks a little bit big, 6'2", 263 pounds right there, catching that ball, moving downfield. He's really a big time threat, I think, from the tight end position for this Bloomsburg offense. First and 10, and Bloom goes with the same formation. It will change the play, however. And off to Price, up the middle. Gordon wraps him up, and he causes a fumble. Johnson falls on it for California. The Vulcans come up with a turnover, and they'll have the ball at the 45-yard line. Huge, Josh. That's all you can really describe that play. Huge, maybe clutch even if you would go as far to say that. Huge, oh, California dodging what seems like another bullet the way Bloomsburg's been running. You see Price going up the middle. That ball just ends up getting stripped. Great play by California. Ted Johnson's there to fall on it. Got to give a lot of credit to that defensive line for California. Held the ground. It looked like Brandon Gordon and Willie Watkins was able to get their hand on the ball, rip that ball loose. And now California with first and ten will go to the I form. Hand off to Dane Williams, hits the line hard, stays on his feet and picks up one or two where he could have been stopped in the backfield. California just trying that power offense right now and it gets them two yards. It's second down and eight. And Dane Williams just talked about it time and time again this year. He just keeps his legs turning no matter what. You see right there a great example of that. He hits the line, looks like he can get stopped at the line of scrimmage. Just keep those legs pumping, ends up getting a nice two-yard gain for California. 8.35 to play in the third quarter. Marcel Pisano into motion. Play fake. Pocket collapsing, McCabe stays poised under pressure and completes it to Marcel Pistano at the 32-yard line, first down California. Yeah, I think the original receiver right there was going to be A.J. Jackson. Looks like California's going to try to take that ball to the house. McCabe, you see right there, he's kind of waiting for Jackson to go up and didn't happen. Finds Pistano underneath. Pistano, a nice cut. Gives McCabe a chance to find him, hit him for the first down. And off to Dane Williams, off tackle. Makes Zimmerman miss, stays on his feet, picks up a first down and gets California into the red zone. Stop made by Kenny Orlando, but Dane runs for a big 12. And California sides are gonna try to run the stretch play back on Bluesburg defense, works to perfection there. Williams just gets to the edge, beats out a defensive lineman there and is able to break that down the sideline. Huge play for California and that's gonna make Bluesburg respect that run all the more. Lock seven minutes, 45 seconds. It's first and 10. 
The Vulcans in the shotgun. Bloomsburg in the nickel. Hand off to Freddie Bacco, lowers the shoulder at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up one. Earl McNeil from being injured earlier makes the stop on this play. Yeah, and I like that Freddie Bacco, a little bit of a change of pace as you see him just drive the middle. You see him get low and you talk about Freddie Bacco. He's not that big of a player. He's only 5'11", 220 pounds, has that low center of gravity. Really does a nice job of skating the shoulder down. He usually gets pretty much beneath every defender is able to drive them backwards and get extra yard for California. It's second and nine. California keeps the shotgun. McCabe over the middle, complete to Marcel Pistano into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Pistano takes the strike for McCabe and makes six points on it. 19 to 17, Cal takes the lead back. California just making it look easy this entire drive. Great job there by McCabe coming back. Seeing Pistano right across the middle. Pistano makes the catch, no one around him. And a huge dive there. Pistano dives about eight yards to end up getting in the end zone there. California retakes the lead. Now you talk about you know, holding Bloomsburg to that field goal. Not only did that, you know, make keep it a touchdown game, but now California kind of gets back on track when it comes to extra points. Now they're kind of in sequence with Bloomsburg. Now that extra point is as important. Yeah, it is 20 to 17. The Vulcans leading the Huskies with 6:44 on the third quarter clock. Again, great matchup here on CUTV. Do not go anywhere. For the latest news from the Mon Valley and its surrounding areas, turn it to CUTV News Center. Our reporters and anchors bring the news, entertainment, sports, and weather live right into your home. It all started here in Fayette County's SPCA. Locals say that they've been seeing an increase in traffic. Enchanted, your classic Disney fairy tale. News, entertainment, sports, weather. CUTV News Center. Live every Thursday at 5 on CUTV. Hey, Katie, do you have the PSAC championship game from 1995? Uh, thanks. <laughs> A 46-yard scoring drive that culminates on a 16-yard pass from Kevin McCabe to Marcel Pistano. 20-17 is now the Cal Vulcan lead. Kick is away to Jesse Cooper. He made it happen earlier. He looks to do it again. Breaking to the near side of the field. Misses one defender and then is wrapped up at the 39-yard line, but still a solid return. Freddie Bacco able to make the stop for California with the help of Gabe Hernandez and the Bloom offense. Coming off of a turnover, will come back on the field, and that turnover resulted in this touchdown pass from McCabe to Pisano. Yeah, just a nice little version of pitch and catch right there. Pisano just sits down in the middle of that Bloomsburg zone defense, makes a play, turns around, no one around him. Nice job finding the end zone, getting the touchdown for the Vulcans. Weber goes in motion. There's the I formation of Bloomsburg. Not much variation in terms of formation today for the Huskies. He'll roll and he'll pass. Evades Terrence Hemsley and Kyle Ream hauls it in on the sideline and the official signal is incomplete. He was bumped out of bounds by Trey Allen. Again, good coverage. That hitch out is tough to defend and Trey Allen's done it well twice today. This time he'll at least get credit for the incompletion. You did see the replay right there. See immediately the referee singles the completion. Great play. You set it, Josh, by Trey Allen. Did a nice job. You know, he went at it with one hand to try to make the deflection, realized that was going to happen. Used his other hand in his body to push the player, in that case, Ream, out of bounds. Earlier on, you remember, Allen got beat for about 15 yards on that same route. And really, he made a nice play on the ball. Just Ream had the positioning that time. Allen gets the better of him. Second and 10 now. And we have a flag thrown, play clock at zero. The Huskies may back up five yards. This, this would be our first penalty of the game. 
And that's amazing, Josh, that neither of the team's been penalized. I mean, talked about, you know, it was kind of chippy earlier. Didn't know penalty was going to come there. I think the referees did a nice job just letting the player just kind of get that aggression out of the system. We've seen a very clean game so far. It's been a nice job because, you know, California, they've had some issues with the penalties in the past. They're not really harming so far here today. Second and 15. I twins for Bloom. 3-4 and blitz being shown by California. Menendez coming off the end. Latour's going to pass over the middle for Remu goes up and almost made a spectacular grab, but Terrence Johnson wraps him up immediately and makes sure he can't follow up on the tipped ball. Incomplete, third and 15. I like the play call there by California. Josh, California not afraid to bring the blitz. Six people coming on the rush. As you see, Pog just collapsed quickly over Latour. Latour can still get it away. Reem almost makes the catch, but nice coverage there for California. It looked like Terrence Johnson was in on that play. Again, third and 15. The Vulcans only need to back up. They can give underneath. And they just don't want to see the Huskies convert here on third and long. Latour is in the shotgun. Dime package for the Vulcans, white leather, the lone back, backer for California, I should say. And white leather will make, will be missed by Latour right there. And then Latour is brought down at the 44 yard line, shy of the first down. It'll be fourth and six to go. Good pursuit on the far side of the field by Trey Allen to force the Huskies to punt, but White Leather, that linebacker in the middle, ideally is the guy that brings Latour down on that first attempt. And you see Latour, I mean, that speed just played California, played him in the first matchup. Latour ran for a 49-yard quarterback draw touchdown. But California, nice job. Made sure they got Latour down before he got the first down. Forced Bloomsburg to punt. And Bloom will want, Koenig punts it for the Huskies. Fair catch for Gumbert at the 30-yard line. He fumbles. It's going to be picked up and returned for a touchdown by Justin Presley. The Huskies take the lead back on another special teams error for the Vulcans. Hold, hold on just a second. There is a flag on the field. It's right around the area. Josh Gumbert, who knows, maybe a halo violation of kick catch interference. That's going to be the call, and that is... Huge. We got to see this. Uh, wow. Say the least, wow. There was there was definitely some kind of contact made down there. See if we can see what's going on there. Oh, boy. Oh, I don't oh, know about oh, that. Oh. I don't know about that. Josh Gumbert Fan. certainly had the opportunity to bring that in. The Huskies fans are up in arms, and I think they have a reason to be. Wow. That is a... Huge bullet being dodged. See if we can see it again here. Gumbert goes for this play. There was a heap of defenders around him, but no one touched I, him. They didn't. I mean, wow. They're just a lucky break. I mean, that's something California's done a lot this year, seems like, on punts. They're just not getting under the punt very well, trying to fill it too far in front of them. And California just catches a break. It gives uh, Cal 15 yards, and Redmond Stadium is irate. I think we're looking at a riot down here. Yeah. Good Lord, everyone on their feet. And, and like you said, I mean, they have reason. Uh, yeah, and Josh, I think we're kind of lucky that we have an elevator down to the ground floor. We don't <laughs> yeah. have to go through this crowd after the game. I mean. If that's a decisive whoa. call, whoa boy. Uh, it, it already is decisive, Josh, because, I mean, it brought back a touchdown. So You're right. if California could go the other way, put some points on the board, they could really take control of this game, and who knows what could happen. A 14-point swing. Wendell Brown gets the carry, and he's down to the 45-yard line. Second down and two it's going to be now. Andy, that's an interesting point coming in from the truck. <laughs> yeah, I kind of shake your head. Do you remember in that first matchup, lose Marcel Pistano made a touchdown catch called offensive pass interference kind of a way of evening things up if you will throughout the games but a lot more on the line today absolutely that's I don't know what to say other than wow for that call and off to Brown again St tripped up in the backfield but he stays on his feet and picks up a first down Window Brown fights the good fight first down California you gotta love Window Brown the speed back just keep those legs turning putting down the shoulder breaking tackles in the backfield looked like that play was gonna go absolutely nowhere see nice little sides up there breaks one tackle two tackles it's going to keep falling forward. Three tackles, four tackles right there, and finally gets taken down. However, gets past the marker, and California gets the first down. 
So Andy, in a game that has seen no penalties, other than a delay a game midway through the third, a penalty that is huge. And that pass incomplete to Dane Williams on first and ten. But I mean, think about that. We haven't seen a piece of laundry on the field all game, and we do. And we see one that negates a touchdown that in retrospect may not have been that great of a call. Yeah, my, my brain is still trying to figure that out. I mean, I still haven't quite come, come to grips with what happened there. And I thought we were looking at Bloomsbury taking the lead back, going for the extra point, put them up four, and then instead that penalty is called and California's going the other way, driving the ball. Gonna have a chance to put some more points on the board here. Maybe pull away from Bloomsburg in this third quarter. Second and ten, McCabe in the shotgun. Chase DiCarlo is in the slot. And they're gonna pass it to DiCarlo, complete at the 36 yard line, wrapped up by Greg Myers. It'll be third down and five to go. Chase DiCarlo running from the slot for California. Nice job, it's a nice little in pattern for about five yards. He's not shot breaking a tackle, getting what he can. Bit of California third and medium length right now, something California really hasn't seen a whole lot in this matchup. Three fifty to play in the third quarter. It's third and five. McCabe takes the snap, looks right, complete to Jackson. First down, California, down to the 25-yard line. Jesse Cooper stops Jackson's forward progress. That's a nice job by Kevin McCabe. He threw the ball behind A.J. Jackson to make sure the defenders had no chance to try to make the play. Jackson just runs about seven yards, makes sure he has enough for the first down, turns around, makes the catch, nice catch with the hands, extending the arms out there, make the play. California keeps those chains rolling. First and ten. Single back, tight set to the right of McCabe, and Pisano in motion to put Twins on the left side. He'll pass, he looks for Jackson who goes up. Beautiful pass defense by Oscar Rivera, and we have another flag come on in the field. Andy, this one may in fact be warranted as Jackson was horse collared from behind as he went up to make that catch. Yeah, looks like defender Oscar Rivera just got there early. So we're gonna see the official call, and it is pass. Another. Going to say the ball was tipped now. They're going to pick the flag up. So, well, who knows, Josh? Maybe a little bit of a makeup call there? I, it might have been. It, it really might have been, guys. There's a, there's a look at it. and Ooh. I, That is close, but Rivera, you know, a good jump to get up and knock that one down. May have impeded Jackson a bit, but I, I do think that the, you, you got to pick that flag up, especially yeah. after what's transpired here. Yeah, after looking back at it, that was a good call. I think Rivera did a nice job. I think... Rivera was playing the ball, and I think that was where I think the biggest, you know, asset for Bloomsburg was if he's playing Jackson, that probably would have been a penalty. McCabe steps up in the pocket, and he's going to be sacked. He might have got past the line of scrimmage, so it won't count as a sack. But he's brought down from behind by Marcus Zimmerman. It's third down and ten now. Yeah, Marcus Zimmerman, nice job there. Pocket just collapses quickly on Kevin McCabe. He's got to try to make something happen. Zimmerman's wrath went from behind and brings him down. Third down and 10, 2.40 to play in the third quarter. Huge defensive play coming up for Bloomsburg, and we're going to have a timeout taken by California. Andy, California goes through Seton Hill last week, who took out American International in the first week, and Bloomsburg gets the home field all throughout. Westchester beats SoCon in the first round and then loses to Bloom last week, and one and two matched up here in Super Region 1. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the way everybody wanted as you see the national bracket there. We have, do have some score updates for you from those other games. You talked about California going to play the winner of Grand Valley State and Minnesota Duluth. That game right now, 3-0 Grand Valley State in the lead through the first quarter of the other two games. North Alabama is beating Delta State. Delta State was the one seed. Scored 24-7 right there in that game. Abilene Christian is taking a 10-7 lead over Northwest Missouri. Those winner of those two games will match up next Saturday as well. Yeah, and all the one and two seeds advancing from every bracket. So it looks like the best of the best playing here in the NCAA Division II playoffs. It may be Division II, but I, for one, got to say I love the way they run their playoff system. This is how you do it. Maybe Division I could take a lesson. Third down and 10. McCabe takes the snap under pressure. Throws it to the end zone. Gumbert goes up incomplete just over his head. 
It'll be fourth down and 10. And California just misses by the smallest of margin. See McCabe rolling out, can't really find anyone. Finally finds Gumbert across the middle. That ball just sails a little bit. Gumbert can't quite get up in time to make the play, so California just misses that one there. And it looks like territory there right now. Looks like they may go for it here on fourth down. This could be a huge swing in momentum. Fourth and 10, California converts and sucks the wind out of Redmond Stadium, or Bloomsburg gets the stop and a chance to take the lead again. McCabe looking left, complete to Marcel Pistano, first down inside the 10 yard line. California will have first down and goal to go. And that's exactly what Marcel Pistano need to do, get the first down, check. Sit down in between the zone coverage, check. McCabe, nice job looking that side of the field the whole way. Surprise Blues are going to try to jump on Pistano. Three defenders all around him, and Pistano still makes that grab. Gives California the first and goal opportunity. Single back formation. The tailback is Wendell Brown. Handoff to Brown, up the middle, looking right. He'll be wrapped up and brought down by Justin Presley, the man who had the touchdown taken away. It'll be second down and six and a half to the end zone. Yeah, Wendell Brown does a nice job, ran up the middle, did a nice job, just kept those legs pumping. Was able to break a couple tackles from behind the line of scrimmage, got what he could right there. You saw for Bloomsburg, first contact was made by number 11, Michael Veranovage. So Wendell Brown, nice job running, got what he could on that first down play. I formation, Sean Johnson in to lead the way for Window Brown. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Greg Myers. Make it third and goal. Brown goes nowhere. Kind of surprised to see Window Brown in there trying to go up the middle. It seems like every time Window Brown gets inside the 10-yard line, California runs more of a sweep play or a stretch play, get him to the outside, let him take the corner against the defense. They just try to line this up right now, just run it straight up the middle on a dive play. Nothing happening. California is going to try to have to decide whether to try to run this ball on third down to go for the touchdown to the air. Third and goal. 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. McCabe to throw. He's going to roll. Look to the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Vulcans. Josh Gumbert reels it in. And California goes up 26-17. What, what a play by Josh Gumbert. Give Kim McCabe a lot of credit, rolled to the outside. Looked like he was just gonna try to tuck that ball, get to the corner on his own, and sees Gumbert across the mode, just kind of lobs that one up there, allows Gumbert to go up in the back of the end zone, make a play. Gumbert makes it happen for his first touchdown reception of the season. And his first, therefore, in a Vulcan uniform. Hagerman, extra point attempt, up and good. The Vulcan faithful on their sideline saying, Calhoun, Cal U, 27-17, Vulcans leading late in the third quarter. Welcome to Valley Views. I'm your host, Bob Burke from the Valley Independent. Bob Burke knows the Mon Valley. To catch special guests, discuss issues of the Mon Valley, turn it to Valley Views on CU TV. Uh, a local program being planned to put more emphasis on, on, on this whole water issue. And something we're going to commit to for the long term. Is That's one of the promises of the knee you were talking about, which has an easier recovery. To see Bob Burke attack Mon Valley issues, turn it to Valley Views on CUTV. Does peace really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary, we believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace. Rotary. Welcome back to CU TV Sports. A six-yard pass from Kevin McCabe to Josh Gumbert on his first touchdown reception as a Vulcan. Is good to put California up by 10 with only 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Kick is away and it is going to bounce out of bounds 
There's your illegal procedure, and this will help Bloomsburg in terms of starting field position. And Bloomsburg gets a break now, see if they can't drive the ball back down the field. The Californians really just shut them down these previous two drives. Remember two drives ago, Derek Price fumbled. Last drive, they had to punt away. Californians able to take it down the field and score. See what Bloomsburg tries to do here, though. They haven't really been in this position. They're down 10. Do they try to run the ball, keep that offense going? like they have been so far in this game. Or they try to maybe go to the air, see if they don't try to catch California napping. With that, Bloomsburg takes the field at the 40. I twins. Tor puts it in the gut of Kenny Domzowski. He'll run it between the four and the five hole. And he'll gain four. California right now. I think they're content to just hold Bloomsburg to these four and five yard runs because, yes, Bloomsburg is going to work their way down the field, but at the same time, they're going to eat up a lot of clock in doing it. Going to give California a chance to get the ball back, maybe eat up some clock of their own. And that really gives Bloomsburg a chance to get back into this game. Weber goes into motion to the right side. Snap, stretch give to Donzowski. Near the first down, the ball is on the ground. Cal's going to fall on it. Play going to be blown dead. Ground cause. Domzowski picks up six and is going to be inches shy of the first down, I believe. I think Brett Diamond made the stop. Yeah, see if we can see what happened on the replay. See Domzowski going to the right side. Gets through the first level. He ends up getting taken down. He knows the re referee right there immediately calls it down by contact. So all for naught for California, but California keeps it close. Third quarter is over and... It is 27 to 17, California leading. Here's all of our scores from today's game. Williams, the first touchdown for California. First for Bloomsburg would be Derek Price bouncing off tackle and using that speed to get to the corner. And that gave Bloom the seven to six lead. California would come back with this fade pattern to AJ Jackson, putting California ahead 13 to seven. Shovel pass from Dan Latour to Derek Price. Price's second score of the day, the 10-yard scamper. Good to put Bloomsburg on top, 14 to 13. Cal follow that up with this. McCabe to Pistano, a touchdown. And that would make it 20 to 17 at that point after Bloomsburg had had a caning field goal on the previous drive after that long kickoff return. And that Josh Gumbert reception put Cal up 27 to 17. Third and one. Latour sneaks, piles forward, first down, well ahead of that. Latour may have picked up four, as much as four on that sneak. And they cross midfield and first play of the fourth quarter, a good one for Bloomsburg. Andy, what does it take for the Huskies to put themselves back into this? Man, it's hard to say right now, Josh, because you talk about what Bloomsburg has done, it's going to be interesting to try to figure out you know, what they do if they just try to keep running this ball, try to play conservatively, get the touchdown, then worry about the rest as it comes to go for the quick touchdown and kind of force California's hand when it comes to their own offense. Latour fakes the draw. It's going to roll out now. Traffic behind him, and he'll leave it behind him. Latour with speed down the sideline to the 20, the 15, and he goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line into the red zone and a first down for Bloomsburg. Latour does it to California again. Dan Latour, once you said, Josh, he does it again. We saw him in the first matchup and I'm taking it to the house for a touchdown right there. Great coverage downfield by California. Latour just uses the speed and I think California just underestimates the speed. You see Brett Diamond just get beat to the corner. Latour takes it down the sideline. Trey Allen's there to end up forcing Latour out of bounds with Bloomsburg. That really gives them a lot of new life right now because it gets them down inside the red zone with 14 minutes left to play. 14.08 to be precise. First and 10 for the Huskies. Hand off to Domzowski. Up the middle. Down inside the five yard line. The stop made by Josh Menendez. And one Butler. But it's a first and goal to go now for Bloomsburg. And Andy, that's what they've had to do to get themselves back into it. Yeah, case in point right there, you see Gonzalezki with another huge run, and Bloomsburg trying to take over the rushing category once again. California back on their heels. Well, one beat starts to be Bloomsburg, see to pound this ball in right here on this play. 
Surprisingly, California keeping three down linemen inside the five. Audible called by Dan Latour. Hand off to Stephen Brown up the middle, pushing his way towards the goal line. Looks like he's going to be stopped just shy. Inside the one, it'll be second and goal. I think right there you see Dan Latour audible to the fullback, Stephen Adams, because California only had those three down linemen. The big fella almost drove his way to the end zone. California holds him just short. Looks like about one foot right now. Big eye set for Bloomsburg. Second and goal. Latour sneaks into the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies. 27 to 23. The extra point will just put them down by a field goal. Now what can you say? That's exactly what Bloomsburg needed. Now they're going to put the ball in California's hands, make California decide what they're going to do offensively. Expect the Vulcans to try to run some clock. However, you may see California go to the air, see if they can get that score back quickly. So now I think it's the ball right now is in California's court to see what they can try to do offensively. Koenig virtually automatic on the PAT attempts. Man, he is automatic. That one good. 27 to 24. We're going to send it to a break here. An exciting fourth quarter from Redmond Stadium. 12 minutes still to play. California leading by a field goal. Come on now. Exactly how intimidating is a Vulcan? I think we can do a little bit better than some mythical god of fire. Yeah, we need something more forceful, more intimidating, more in your face than that whip blaze. Does peace really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary? We believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace. Rotary. A 60-yard drive for the Bloomsburg Huskies. That is all Dan Latour. Long 35, 40-some yard run, ending with a one-yard Dan Latour touchdown. And it's 27-24 California. Freddie Bacco stopped on the kickoff return at the 27-yard line. Tackle made by number 45, Dan Oliver, for the Huskies. Cal's offense, like Andy said, ball in their court. And I would tend to believe that they would not feel comfortable with uh, Less than a touchdown here. Uh, they can't because, I mean, the field goal is not going to do them any good. It's still going to be a one-touchdown game. We're going to see what California does, see who they bring out in the backfield, see if they go for more of a power back like Dane Williams, if they go for the home run hitter, Wendell Brown. I think it's a little bit too early to lay off and focus on that clock. You still need to leave the whole playbook open. Dane Williams will be the back in the eye for him. Hand off to Williams through the middle. Nice hole, and Dane carries it for eight yards. That's a good rumble, and you got to credit Sean Johnson for helping bust that hole open for Dane Williams. And we talked about Bloomsburg kind of keeping Derek Price on the sidelines throughout the second and third quarter, thinking maybe to keep him fresh. Think about it. California did the same kind of thing. Wendell Brown got the bulk of the carries in the second and third quarter, and now Dane Williams is going to come back in this fourth quarter. You can see those fresh legs right there getting a big game for California. Second down and one. Stretch hand off to Williams. Sheds a defender in the backfield. He is at the first down marker. And the official comes in from the backside and says that Dane did, in fact, rush past the markers. First and 10 Californian. This Vulcan team, Andy, has been so good, not only in the third quarter putting their points up, but once they do in the fourth, have been able to put together some nice five to seven minute drives and really milk some clock. Like I said, I still think it might be a little bit too early to do that, especially if you don't score a touchdown, but success through the first set of downs. It has been. I think California's kind of 
Got to keep doing what they're doing so far in the second half. Just keep mixing up the run in the pass. Keep Bloomsburg honest. Make sure you take some time off that clock. Williams again up the middle on the dive. Pulled down from his left by Dave Hewitt. And it's second and five to go now after that run by the great Dane. Yeah, Josh, we got some third quarter stats handed to us. And you're starting to see the discrepancy between the two teams. Bloomsburg has rushed for 202 yards, passed for 97. California's rushed for 124, passed for 181. So I think you kind of see both these offenses and what they're better at. Bloomsburg's only attempted nine passes. California's attempted 26 so far. So kind of see the strengths of both these teams. Second and five, hand off to Williams, off tackle right. Pushes the line of scrimmage forward. And he's going to be stopped short. It'll be third and one yard to go for California. Another powerful late game run by number 23 in white. Dane Williams, great job there for California. Gets towards the corner, sees contact, just puts the head down, just runs right over the defender. And able to give California a nice short third and one. Ten twenty to play in this game. And as I say that, the clock will be frozen. The Huskies timeout. want a timeout. And I think it should be no surprise that they do take their first time out of the half because uh, a stop here would almost certainly force California into a punt. Though California may be daring and, and think about putting it back on the ground. Andy, California's lone loss this season came to Bloomsburg back in the second game of the season by a score of 24-17, to 17, but... California has been trucking through opponents since then. They have been. I mean, you take a look. The only two other games that really have been close is that IUP game back at the end of September. The PSAC Championship game with Westchester. Mercyhurst, yeah, the final score looks close, but at the same time, California really controlled that game. Just take a look at Bloomsburg's schedule now. Once again, their only loss coming to Westchester. That put Westchester in the PSAC Championship game. You know, it's going to be interesting to see Bloomsburg. They've had a pretty easy time with some of their opponents as well, so... You know, we think we realize coming at these were two of the biggest teams in the region. It's the way they've kind of handled their opponents in their respective divisions, and we're getting a heck of a game so far, Josh. Yeah, what a game of football this has been here at Redmond Stadium. Full house set for California. They'll put it on the ground. Dane Williams falls across the markers. First down, California. Move those chains, keep the clock running, and the Vulcan offense stays on the field. And that's huge. We see... Just trying to sort out the pile right now as California. Looks like they got the first down from here. Just trying to spot the ball down on the field, but great job. We're actually going to have a timeout, looks like, for uh, measurements. The first measurement we've had in this game too, Josh. I thought the way Dane Williams hit that hole, he was going to get the first down easily, but maybe he got the knees down sooner than expected. Now looking at the spot, I'm nearly sure he's going to have enough. Uh, he had, by, by, by a football and a half, he had enough. And it looked to me, too, Andy, that he had certainly crossed that plane, and he did. And it's at the 49-and-a-half-yard line, still just barely on California's side of the field. But more importantly, a fresh set of downs for the Vulcans and, and a winding clock. It is more important, and I think Dan Williams is really getting the workload here in this fourth quarter because he has that ability not only to run up the middle and break tackles, but... He can give you that home run for there now, and he has enough speed where he can get into the secondary and wreak a lot of havoc downfield. And off to Williams. Gut give to the 47. Three-yard pickup. Second down and seven upcoming. In California, yeah, you look see Dan Williams may get a couple more yards, but three yards is really all you need to be successful in this game. You figure you get three yards three plays in a row. It's going to give you, a, what, fourth and one maybe, and more times than not you're going to be able to pick that up. So I think California's got to be happy with what they're doing so far in this fourth quarter, trying to keep the game moving. And off, no, play fake. McCabe rolls complete to Chase to Carlo. Chase to Carlo sent head over heels by Jesse Cooper, but he gains four yards, and it's going to be third down and three. Chase Carlo going for the style point there with the somersault after contact. Does a nice job just rolling out, making this catch, make sure he can get upfield. You see right here, he gets upended right there. Does a nice job, make sure he kind of shielded his knees, rolled off to the side right there. He was able to 
kind of keep rolling forward and get an extra maybe half yard for California, which could be vital on this third down play. Redmond Stadium on its feet again. Third and four, their Huskies with another shot to perhaps send the Vulcans to the sidelines. The shotgun, the handoff to Wendell Brown, breaks free and has a first down, California. That's a big one for Wendell Brown and the Vulcans who move inside the Bloom 40. What a job by Kevin McCabe. He gets this ball, he sets up like he's gonna go for a quick slam pattern. This gives the ball to Wendell Brown up the middle. Brown has to hurdle a defender right at the line, of, right at the first down line to get that first down and California gets to move those chains and we talk about California getting his first downs. They're only getting about, about half a yard, which means they're taking up even more time than they need, taking up even more yardage, which could really help them out as this game moves on. Yeah, and Nick Piccarillo did an excellent job of holding his block. It is tough to run block out of the shotgun, and he stayed engaged with Dave Hewitt on the line of scrimmage and saw to it that nobody came free to stop Wendell Brown from picking up those five yards. And now I, I think we might have a clock issue on the field and the official will now point to the sideline and wind it. We're at 8.28 in the fourth quarter. The Vulcans hanging on to that field goal lead but looking like they may improve upon that. To Carlo into motion, single back formation, Pistano into motion. Play fake, McCabe got a throw over the middle. That one nearly intercepted. It hit Greg Myers, I'm not sure that he was ready for it. It's second and 10. California dodged a huge bullet there. McCabe rolls out, didn't see Myers coming in from his linebacker position, throws one right across the middle. Well, I think he was ready for it. Just dropped it. Yeah, who knows, I mean, from the camera we can't quite tell, but nonetheless, California dodged that huge bullet, whether Myers was ready for the pass or not, didn't make the play, and California can get moving here on second down. And off to Williams, he bounces it right, wrapped up and brought down in the backfield by John Oakes, making the stop. It's gonna be third down and 14 after the Great Dane is taken down from the legs. That's the first time we've called John Oakes' name in about two and a half quarters, I think. He really hasn't done a lot. He was active, really, the California did a nice job shutting him down, and finally he's able to break through the offensive line, make the tackle in the background, in the backfield, really making California make a tough decision here on third long. 7.35 to play in the fourth quarter. Here's a clutch play for the Vulcans offense. McCabe has time. Looking downfield, taking a shot. He has Pistano who goes up one-handed and has it swatted away by Oscar Rivera. Great coverage downfield. California gonna have to punt. And add another chapter onto this beautiful story we've seen told here at Redmond Stadium today. It just got more interesting. I don't think we have seen the climax of this story yet. Hoo hoo hoo, Josh. Saw right there on the replay and wondered why Marcel Pistano only went up with one hand to try to make that catch. It looked like Oscar Rivera had a hold of his other hand, so Bloomsburg may have dodged a little bit of both there with a the no pass interference call. Fiorenza looking to pin Bloomsburg. Cooper calls for a fair catch at the nine. And that's where the Huskies start this drive with 7-11 to work with on the fourth quarter clock. Andy, is it do or die yet? Do they need to score here or do they get another shot later on? It's tough to tell. I mean, it depends on what Bloomsburg decides to do here. If they just try to run the ball up the middle, they've been in this whole game, I think it's time for them. They gotta make this drive count. Same time if they mix it up, they try to roll out maybe one or two players trying to make the passes, don't use a lot of time. Maybe Cal gets the ball back with 5.30 or more left on the clock. I think they still have another chance. Same formation you've seen Bloomsburg in all game long. It's an I formation. They send their twin wide outs to the right of Latour. Hand off to Derek Price, who is fresh. Single H lays him down behind the line of scrimmage at the eight-yard line. Terrence Hemsley been relatively quiet today, but not on that run stuff. Derek Price, we've not seen much of in this half, has nowhere to go on that carry. Ooh, great job there by Terrence Hemsley to make that tackle. Just wraps up Derek Price. Price tries to play the game, unsuccessful. It's a lot of running backs have been this year against Terrence Hemsley. 6.35 to play. Cal's in the nickel. 
Menendez is going to blitz. Dumps it off into the flat to Derek Price. He is elusive. He is speedy. And Terrence Johnson will stop him at the 28-yard line. Again, it seems like a touchdown taving tackle made by a California defensive back. California brought the pressure there. Nice job by Latour to recognize Price just out. We're in a little flare pattern to the right side. Latour just checks down to him, hits him. And Price just goes off to the races. California has no one covering the man out of the backfield. Nice job he set up just by Terrence Johnson. Nice job wrapping up Price and bringing him down. Most likely saving a touchdown. That's a dangerous play that Bloom has not looked to in this game, but getting a running back open with space like that and a, a player like Price could spell big trouble for California. Price stopped by Juan Butler now on the 34-yard line. It's going to be second down and six. And, Andy, just the way this is panning out, if Bloom keeps this up, they may be talking about scoring and leaving California little time to work with. And now we're getting ahead of ourselves, but just as looking down the road, this is what it's looking like. It is a possibility, especially if Bloomsbury can be successful running this ball, getting those five, six yards per carry that they've been getting on this drive. California may have to work their drive with a minute left maybe even. Well, tour to throw. He's going to run. And he gets it off, and it hits the turf just at the line of scrimmage. Latour able to advance that ball forward, and Stephen Brown can't make the adjustment quick enough from bringing in the uh, low pass. Uh, correction, Stephen Adams, not Stephen Johnson. It's going to be third down and five to go. In California, you got to like what they're doing on this drive. Not afraid to bring the pressure. They've been bringing one or two linebackers every play, really making Latour get flushed out of that pocket. And at the same time, they're only bringing you know, bring one or two guys, four or five total. That still gives them enough players to stop the run of Derek Price if they need to up the middle. 5.19 on the clock. Huge third down play for this Husky team. Latour will throw. Got time. He's got Ream on the out. Complete first down Bloomsburg at the 41-yard line. Just a little too much cushion given to Kyle Ream. It was, and that's the one route that Bloomsburg has had success with time and time again is that little hook pattern. As you can see, Latour flushed out of the pocket once again. Just doesn't look like Latour really feels comfortable back there sitting in the pocket for long periods of time. He's got lucky he's able to find Ream on the near sideline and get that first down. First and 10 now. Play fake to Price. Block made by Price in the backfield then. And it's caught by Weber just shy of the 50-yard line. Johnson shoves him out of bounds. Second down and two. You see Terrence Johnson wrapped up Weber on that play then realized he wasn't going to be able to bring him down just due to the size of him. Just kind of pushing, help him, forcing him out of bounds there. But Blooms are once again, I mean, He's getting these nice you know, short plays, and you said it, Josh. It could be a case in point where California may not have a lot of time to work with, and they might have to drive down the field and score now. 4.35 to play in the fourth quarter. Weber switches sides. California in their 3-4. Handoff to Price up the middle. Decked at the 49-yard line by Juan Butler. Big hit from the free safety position. But that might be enough to move the chains. In fact, we may have a measurement. Yeah, Price got lucky. Given a nod to Willie Walker, made first contact with Derek Price in the backfield. Really just kind of stopped him from getting a momentum going forward. Then you said a big lick right there by a couple of Vulcans right around the first down marker. I thought he had enough on forward progress, but with a big hit, they shove him back a few inches. He's going to be short and so it might be time to call that sneak play again yeah you, you wouldn't expect anything less right now and that's to the point where you might as well just fall forward but I mean California you know not a lot you can do in this third down play did a nice job holding Price down they're finally starting to respect Derek Price up the middle really doing a nice job just kind of locking it down the only thing they've got to worry about is maybe another play action pass give Latour a chance to roll out with a run pass option So they spot it at the 49 and one third yard line. Third and not even a foot to go, I'd say six inches. Stack set, I formation, ream out to the left. You be careful for something sneaky here. And it's just a sneak. 
Latour gets to the 47, 48, first down Bloomsburg. You know, with, with third and inches and how successful they've been with that, that sneak, and, and watch out for taking a shot to ream down the field. You know, why not? Yeah, at this point in the game, I think the third and short kind of becomes like a second and short. If you're Bloomsburg in the kind of talk about it, you know, second and short, you can really call any play in the playbook and you still get it on third down. So at the same time, third and one, don't get it, you still go for it on fourth and short. First and 10, 3.50 to play in this game. Latour looking to the flat. Derek Rice has tons of space. Brett Diamond misses. And then from behind, Willie Walker runs down Derek Price, but a first down again by Bloomsburg. Now he, he's short, second and one. A little quick huddle now for Bloomsburg. This is going to not make it easy for California to make those personnel changes. Twins to the right of Dan Latour. And off to Price. Off tackle. First down yardage. Terrence Hemsley makes the stop at the 35. Yeah, I mean, Josh, we're kind of at a point where you just kind of got to look at each other and kind of shake your head because you don't know what's going to happen. What is this? An another quick huddle and a snap by Latour. Shoved out of bounds by Terrence Johnson at the 31-yard line, maybe 32. Uh, actually, they're going to say he was way further back than that. It's going to be second and eight now. But that stops the clock with 3.06 to go. And you don't know what range you need to get into for John Koenig. I mean, he's a good kicker, but we're not sure how, how far he can kick it, but he is accurate. You talk about Koenig coming into this game when it came to extra points. Anyway, he was 61 for his last 61. So you figure if you can get him the ball towards the middle of the field, he's going to make it count. Second and eight. Clock continues to run. They had a Latour stop before he got out of bounds. Give to Domzowski, nowhere to go. Matt McClellan knocks him down at the 34-yard line. He loses a yard. It's third and nine. And now with that play, you really put Dan Latour into position. I don't think he's really comfortable in, and that's dropping back and trying to throw the ball out of the pocket. It's going to be interesting to try to see what happens here. I think you've got to be careful about the swing pass if you are California because we've seen those running backs be able to get open. At least I'm going to see the torque come out of the shotgun. Guard those flats if you're California. Stephen Adams is the back. A little surprised to see him in and not Derek Price, especially timeout considering that California. swing pass is a threat. California wants to take a timeout. Andy, let's look at the brackets one more time and update the scores as I have a feeling we're not going to have time to look at much more in this game. Being as the finish we're going to be looking at. A look at the other games around the region. The last score update from Minnesota Duluth and Grand Valley is a 7-6 lead for Minnesota Duluth late in the second. North Alabama keeps their hopes alive of hosting a national championship game. They're all over Delta State. 38-14 midway through the third. And your last game, Northwest Missouri edging Abilene Christian by a score of 14-10 after the first quarter. Again, uh, by the time you see this broadcast, it's very likely that all these games will have been decided. Well, I would hope so, <laughs> that they're all decided more, more than very likely. If not, we're missing the greatest game in the history of mankind. There have been at least 5,000 people taking place for both teams because we'd be in about the 1,256th overtime if I had to take a guess. But uh, at least as those scores look so far, the only team that we can lock up is moving on is, is North Alabama. And remember, North Alabama is the two seed in that bracket. Delta State was the one seed. So a little bit of an upset there. California trying to upset the one seed in the Super Region 1 bracket in Bloomsburg. And what is a full visiting sideline for California is on its feet making noise, trying to help their Vulcans come up with a stop here on third down and nine. Latour in the shotgun. Adams remains the back to the left of Dan Latour. Low snap. Latour looks for the swing. He's going to run it. He has the first down and more. Juan Butler misses. And he is taken off his feet at the nine-yard line. Ball on the ground, and California comes up with it. I think the Vulcans recovered it. No signal from the official yet. Boy, they're still fighting for it, Josh. Latour is down. He got hit pretty hard. I have no idea what's going on down there, Andy. California thinks Move. that they have it. Dan Latour is hurt. 
I, and we don't have an of official signal yet. And you, you saw Latour, he looked for that flare pass. Nice job by California picking it up. Now you see Latour just running downfield. See if he can slow it down here, see what happens as Latour tries to cut back towards the middle. And, oh. Darren Burns. Oh. oh. I, I, I wasn't even looking at the ball there. I was looking more at Latour to see what happened to him. You see right there, he's down. Wow, Dan Latour still down. Got lit up a little bit, and you can see right there. Ball's still loose, so both teams still fighting for it. Looks like there's a white jersey with the ball, so I think right now I think we're more worried about Dan Latour than we are the football. I mean, the ball was out before he went down, and I will say that after that big helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision, Latour kind of sat up and shook his head and looked like he was with it and then, then kind of just collapsed afterwards. We're going to watch one more time, guys. Try to slow it down again when we get towards this hit here. Now Burns is going to cause the fumble. He lays his helmet right on the football. I think Juan Butler is the player that came in from behind. Now that's huge by Darren Burns, a great play. I think that was Butler from behind, that, that little helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. And Latour is going to walk off the field under his own power. And the Bloomsburg defense is on the field. It's a turnover. California has the football. And Bloomsburg has two timeouts to work with. And now California's got to make sure that they can keep moving this ball. You don't want to give Bloomsburg a chance with the Reno. Less than a minute left here. Maybe block a point. Who knows what could happen. So California's just got to keep going offensively, get those three to four yards that they need to get this first down and ice this game. And off to Dane Williams, up the middle, pushing forward. And he has a first down. An exclamatory run by Dane Williams. You can put two dots beneath that exclamation point. First and ten. And that charges Bloomsburg with their second timeout. They stop the clock with 146. Now the clock's going to wind. Bloom didn't stop the clock. I'm a little surprised at that. Yeah, I almost wonder if Bloom's are right now just either waiting for second down or if they realize that even if they do take the timeouts, California could still run out the clock. But nonetheless, the clock rolls and California's lined back up in the eye. And off goes up the middle and stop at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10, and, and there's the timeout from Bloomsburg. So if they can come up with a stop on this next run, they might be able to stop it with 115, and then they'd need a stop on third down, and then they take 30, 40 seconds off the clock at the most. They're left with 25, maybe 30 seconds. Andy, let's go back one more time and look at the hit. Two things to focus on. One, an outstanding play by Darren Burns on laying his helmet into that football and running Latour down from behind to make that play. And then the hit from the far side by, it was Terrence Johnson actually, that shook up Latour right there when he gets up. You wonder if, if he's okay. Yeah, he seemed to be fine, but then he kind of hit the dust. Probably got his bell rung pretty good seeing some birdies. Yeah, you can see him down the sideline. Uh, What's going through his mind right now? He's got to feel awful. Yeah, to say the least, I mean, he, he, Dan Latour did a great job. He's keeping Bloomsburg in this game, and now for that to happen at this juncture in the game, no, it's going to hurt real bad for Dan Latour, to say the least. They're testing him out right now just to make sure, you know, he's all right in the head. and uh, That's almost the bigger story now is, you know, certainly health comes before the football game. Williams shaking tacklers. Dane Williams is taken off across the 30 and the 40. Run down from behind to the 45. California may have just sealed themselves a spot in the national semifinal. I think so. I mean, Dane Williams running with a purpose. I think, you know, Williams could have just kind of relaxed here, realized Williams are going to have one timeout. They still could have ran the clock out, but he's going to run it hard up the middle, just breaking tackles as the California faithful are all on their feet as he... Just comes out of nowhere right there. Give a huge nod right there to Dane Williams. I mean, just hit the hole and looked like he was going to get two, three yards, and he came out of nowhere and was downfield into the secondary. And it looks like that could just about do it here. Time to kneel the clock out for California. 50 seconds and winding. Bloom not even going to worry about that last time out. And Andy, it just 
just the storyline year for both of these teams. I mean, Bloomsburg beats California, upends them in the rankings. They get number one in the region. A great game here on the field at Redmond Stadium. The best I have seen in my four years here. No two ways about it. An outstanding game in California, the two seed in the region. Up ends Bloomsburg at home and advances to the national semifinal. They await the winner of the Minnesota Duluth Grand Valley State game. Just all kinds of emotion going through both of these teams' heads. It is. I mean, for California, you just got to be happy because there was a time during this game they were trailing. I mean, they don't really get a lot going in terms of defensively, but they really just shut it down when they needed to. And now if you're Bloomsburg on the other side, you just got to try to deal with this defeat. I think Dan Latore has really just got to shake it off. He's only a junior. He's going to be back next year. He's got to really just not let this game haunt him throughout the entire offseason. Dan Latour will get another crack at this. California with perhaps their deepest and most skilled roster in years. And that's not to take anything away from last year's national semifinal team. But this California team seems poised to make a run, and there are others across Division II that say they are worried about California. And that, that comes as a surprise to some of us who have, have sort of followed Division II this year in Grand Valley, the number one team in the country. Not so happy about the perspective of uh, perhaps having to stop Marcel Pistano and A.J. Jackson on the same team. Yeah, I think part of that is because we see California week in and week out. We don't realize just the kind of talent that they have here, Marcel Pistano and A.J. Jackson. We just kind of gotten used to it. But now you have, you know, other schools. You talked about Grand Valley just having some trouble. They're not real sure what to expect from these big, tall wide receivers California has. So whether it be Grand Valley State or Minnesota Duluth, I think California's Got to have a legitimate chance of going to the national championship. And they really do. They were stopped at that point last year and, and look to go past that this year. Here's a look at John Luckhart, the all-time winningest coach in California Vulcan history. Moving up those charts. Last week he took that spot in the sole possession at number one over Ted Nemeth. And let's go back and look at our plays of the game. Here's the key play, a fumble by Dan Latour. And on a play that looked like the Huskies were going to get themselves in position to not only maybe tie it, but take the lead. And Latour's shaking up on the play. He puts the ball on the ground. And there's Dane's run to pick up the first down and, and end this this ball game. And, and all things aside, Latour did fumble the ball before he was injured, and, and we only hope that he's okay. But California came up with a big defensive play in what might have been a little bit of a suspect defensive effort, but in the end it is a defensive play that wins this for California. It is, and I mean, this California defense have gotten better and better as year has gone on. And remember our first broadcast was the Bloomsburg game here. And you know, we were worried about the defense, and they've really, I think, proved us wrong throughout this entire season. We saw a defense play makes it happen. And, you know, Josh, while we have a moment, this could be your last ride here with the California Vulcans on CUTV. Just like to say thanks for all your years of support, if you will, and really helping me along this year. It's been a pleasure calling the games with you. Andy, I appreciate that very much. I've had a great time doing the games with you this year. I've had a couple of different partners over here, and, uh, and I found my chemistry with all of them, and, and you certainly, uh, it was fun to do the games with you, and, and I wish you guys the best of luck in the future, but this Cal football team, I wish the best of luck in the future. Thank everybody at CU TV for my time here, and this, this, this march is not over for the Vulcans. Regional champions for the second year in a row, national semifinalists for a second year in a row. How does that sound? For all the production crew here at CU TV, for the guys in the truck and the cameramen, for Andy Walter, my name is Josh Eicha, signing off one final time here on Vulcan football coverage and saying we'll see you next time right here on CU TV Sports.